It is in fact tea time. And who do we have with us today? Other than the meme machine himself, the machinima maker. Remix remix lord as well. It is Sampo. Hello, welcome in. How are you doing Hi. today? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. There we go. Round of, uh, round of applause. Clapping. Yeah. A round of applause <laughs> there. And what are we here to talk about today? Well, for besides Guild Wars 2, but some other stuff in particular. In particular, the fact that, you know, we all play video games, not for fun, but for the pure rewards <laughs> that we find within the games, okay? There is no fun to be had in video games, only the sweet, the sweet collection of rewards. And some mm -hmm. of that is indeed with, it, with that cash money, dude, with that cash money. Like on the gem store, that's where all the good stuff is, dude. So a little, little bit to mm -hmm. talk about there. And you know what? I, I think the best person to open up this discussion about rewards and exclusivity <laughs> is going to be MMO Inks, dude. MMO Inks mm. has a reputation for roasting the gem store on a daily basis at this point. Just t tell us a little bit about how you feel Black Lion Keys are right now, because I actually kind of like them, but I want to hear what you think about them. Yeah, so I, I uh, over on YouTube for, you know, a much deeper explanation than you might get here, there were two videos. I did one just on the statuettes, and I did one to, that released today on the Black Lion chest. The rest of this stuff, you know, I, I think that for a long time, uh, several people, m myself included, and I, I certainly wasn't the originator of this idea, but people were saying, "Look, we need some kind of bad luck system, a bad beat system, where if you open X number of chests." Yeah, and other games have this as well, by the way, where if you open a number of RNG chests. Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna get lucky, or you're gonna be able to work up to some kind of reward. And so, ArenaNet with this latest Black Lion chest, which came actually earlier than I thought it was going to, uh, they added that system in the statuette system. And overall, I think it is a good system. I think there's some things missing from the statuette programming system, and I think some of the numbers are a bit wonky. Um, for example. If you want a Black Lion ticket, which is an uncommon drop, that's 50 keys, or 50 statuettes, excuse me. Uh, if you want one gold Black Lion key, which gets you an uncommon or better random drop, that's 50 keys. If you want one of the exclusive items, of which there's only three available right now, those are 60 keys apiece. The, what are the, the exclusive <clears throat> items available right now? It's the Elementalist Sword, uh, the Zayishan Balthazar Dog Helmet, whatever that was called. And the jackal back piece, the jackal pup okay. back piece. Right. Uh, and so, and that's fine, but I think that, and, and I've seen some arguments against this, but my thought process anyway is that the current exclusivity should be included in those statuettes. That's part of the point of the statuettes is that, you you know, you can open enough statuettes to eventually get what the current hot item is. One of the complaints from people when the Elementalist Sword came out, for example, which really struck a nerve with people, was that I want the Elementalist Sword, and there was that one guy who opened like a thousand chests or some ridiculous number, or he spent a thousand, he, he spent a crazy amount of money, I don't remember the exact numbers anymore, but he spent a crazy amount of money and he never seen the Elementalist Sword. And so that's where this idea of this system was like, look, we need a system like this so that you can mm -hmm. only take so many bad beats until you get it. And ArenaNet currently has that set at 60 tickets or, or about 60 chests. Now, it could be yeah. less chests because, for example, there's a common drop of two chests. There's a rare drop of 25. And we'll come back to the rare drop in a second on how terrible and a slap in the face that is. But um, the point is, is that you can open enough chests, 60 of them, let's say, and eventually get that exclusive reward. The, the problem, as I see it, is you don't actually get the current exclusive reward, which is the draw to buy in the first place, because you see something you really want. For example, right now there's a griffin back piece slash glider, where the griffin looks like he's struggling to keep your fat <laughs> arse in the air, let's say. And he's he's flapping away, and he's pulling you up, and, and the, the, you know, the bigger, fatter your character is like a giant char in heavy metal armor or a giant norm, the, the more hilarious it is. And, um, but you can't, you can only get it by opening black lion chests. 
and the statuette in my mind is the closed gap there right like it's it's the it's the system that is supposed to let me work towards that where if i open 60 chests i should be able to get that if i want that item but right. that's not how it currently works and and don't get me wrong i know that arena net will eventually add it to the system right that griffin will probably eventually make it into the statuette as well as other exclusive items the problem is how long are you going to wait for that griffin to make it into the statuette chest mm. because if we look back at the iron node which until this chest wasn't available although it's available through statuettes now you know you waited more than a year for that to come back into the chest so you're going to just sit and save your statuettes for a year to get that one exclusive item? I mean, probably not. But you're playing a long waiting game, and you're hoping that ArenaNet updates this list eventually to include the exclusive item you want. I, I think there should be a better connect between what is the current exclusive item so that you can open, like, 60 chests to get that item that you want. Do you think that there's, like, a reasoning behind why they leave some exclusive items out? Like, is it that they only put in the buyable exclusive items once they're no longer in the chests. So just because they don't intend on bringing them back into the chest, so have them there available somehow. Sure, and, and they played with this idea for a little time in the rare drop category where there was a black line exclusive chest, which had a choice of a whole bunch of previous exclusives, Elemental Sword included. Now they took away that chest, they got rid of it for some reason, because that chest was actually sellable in the trading post. And if you look, it's worth 300, 400 gold, uh, which I was actually okay with. I thought that was a great rare drop for you to actually choose from. Now, if ArenaNet wants to increase the price past 60 statuettes to, to reintroduce such a chest into that program, then sure, I'm fine with that. At least I can work towards the current reward. That That's my biggest hitch with this, is that I want the current hotness. I don't want... The old hotness is cool. I can work towards that. I can pick that up if I want to. Mm. That's awesome that they're that they're giving that. But, you know, people are always attracted to the new shiny thing. But yeah. this doesn't actually solve the new shiny thing because you still have to RNG chest for it and there's still no reward system to get the newest thing. You have to wait till that's updated. Yeah. In yeah. the in the statue. Well, go ahead. So, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think all of the items that are available in Black Lion chests should be uh, be bought available for buying with the statuettes because, like, it's, it just makes more sense. Like, if you look at the other games that do a similar kind of system, like, let's say even like Hearthstone, where you can disenchant cards and you can use the currency that you don't need for uh, creating any item that you want that you can get in Hearthstone, you can get them from packs, but in, in Guild Wars 2, you can get them from the chests. So I think the statuette should be a currency that you can use uh, to buy any item that's in the Black Lion chest. I think that makes yeah. the most sense to me. Yeah, that would be good. That idea. would be great. That would be a good idea. If, if we were doing it. So they could have, they could have like the, the legacy stuff that you could pick up. For, you know, if you wanted to get some of the old stuff, but you can also buy anything existing in the chat. Anything that's on the drop table, right? That would be kind of good. And then, of course, they add uh, the Black Lion booster back in. Because, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. you so, and, so, and when did they so, take that out, by the way? <clears throat> when did they take the, it out? When they reworked it. When they reworked it like the chest. two chests chest ago. Yeah. Two or three chests two ago. Two chests ago, yeah. Yeah. Is the season, so, one memory, <laughs> season one memory box, is it a random RNG box? Or does yes. it always contain? Okay, yeah, it's, it's an RNG yeah. box. It's got some. It's it's RNG within the RNG. It's got some. It, it yeah. can have. It can have something that's kind of good or have something that's complete bullshit in it. So it's, it's definitely a. It's definitely a, definitely an RNG box. But uh, what's the point of statuettes if you use them to buy another RNG box? If the Bogan's purpose <laughs> because, was because listen, you, you get a sense of pride, a sense of pride and accomplishment. Okay. Well, and that RNG it. box has its own currency to work towards. Yeah, so it's like an RNG box has got another, t another type of statue <laughs> in it. You buy, yeah. you buy. Yeah. What is it like the the commemorative sprockets? So you buy those, and then then you can yeah, you open the chest to get the sprockets to then open another chest. Basically, it's good. Yeah. It's very good. It makes a lot of sense. It's very good stuff. Oh, well, what, what is what is the Black Lion uh, uh, commemorative coin? 
the one that costs. One gold. That's just one gold drop. It's a, one it's gold a, jump. Okay. It, I have no yeah. idea why they put that in the block. Honestly, this is the one thing that kind of mildly triggered me. I actually really like the way the black land chests are going, actually, the way they are right now. The thing that really triggered me is that they put this like, trash in it. Like, why is there just... Why do they deliberately put something that they know is shit in the chest? Seriously, like, you is know, it's it possible? It's, yeah. it, it's possible that they're trying to set, like, artificially set the uh, value of yeah. a black lion statuette to say that, oh, look, you know what? Uh, everything's priced this way because we, we as a company, think that, for example, a uh, a elemental uh, sword should be 60 gold on the trading post if it was on the trading post because it's 60 statuettes and a statuette is technically worth one gold each um so so that brings me to the question if they did add like the uh the unlimited um uh, the unlimited uh, upgrade extractor do you think that they would list that at 400 the 4000 statuettes or what would they do for all those really high priced items would it be a ridiculous amount I don't think they would ever. I think those are going to still continue to be the ultimate gamble. That's the ultimate jackpot. So I don't think yeah. those will ever mm. be a statuette thing. Yeah. Mm. So I but think the, that brings the, me to, to an explanation of why they don't have the current hot item exclusive thing on the thing because they want that to be at least for a certain period of time the hot gamble that you could get for an easier gamble, but a nice. And hot you gamble can't put a price on that, can you, boys? Exactly. Oh. I, I, I mean, honestly, though, I think that's a mistake because it goes against the very theme of what the statuettes represent. And that's mm. the system to work towards it. And I've seen somebody in chat saying that, you know, ArenaNet makes less money. Perhaps. I mean, they, they have the metrics and all that. But I would venture to guess that if a player knew that you could get the new glider from statuettes, they might be willing to gamble 25 times. And then when they don't get it, they'll be like, well, I only need 35 more keys. I guess I should gamble a little bit more. And so eventually they will get paid off. Eventually they will get the, the new current thing. But how many wonder... keys is that going to take? I mean, that's the same as the amount adoption license, right? I'm always going to get a mount. So it's not really a gamble, but I might not get the mount that I want. So I'll just keep buying until I get the one I want. Mm-hmm. Yep, 125 gold, I mean gems, is how much in gold right about now? 30 gold or something like that? Yeah, something, about, something, something like that, yeah, about that. Okay, yeah, I think I think if the new hot items uh, came out as purchable, purchasable, uh, people would probably either do the key run more often in preparation for the new hot item to come out and just, just farm the statuettes every time. And have sixty of them ready for the next well, thing. Every that's the thing. It, well, it is a risky well, system. Hold, hold, hold it's on, a risky system on. they put in. Right? And it is risky. <laughs> not exact. Not exactly. Because if you look at the release of Black Lion chests, you're looking at about every four weeks or so for a new Black Lion chest, give or take. Mm -hmm. So that means that since you can only farm once per week, you're really only going to have four or five keys between Black Lion chests. So if you really want to stay current on the new hot, you know, don't get me wrong. If you farm all year, that's, uh, you know, how many weeks in a year, right? So, you know, do the math. Eventually, sure, you can save it up for a year. You can, you know, maybe get a couple of nice free things. But overall, because of the release schedule of Black Lion chests, um, more recently anyway. He's got to farm gold, man. I'm going to grind out that <laughs> gold. Yeah. I wonder how many people have bought the metabolic or utility primers. It's oh, two God. statuettes. I tell, you, I tell you what. I'll tell you, what, I'm gonna hold my hands up for this. For when Wing Five came out, I did actually buy some of those. I bought five of each. I bought a few because I, for some reason, decided I wanted to use those uh, those scribe utility uh, buffs for mm. a while. The oh, ones the, that the give you 200 power or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the scholar ones. Yeah. And they were like two gold each or something at the time, so <laughs> it was worth it at the time. Yeah. I I will say too that I do think that they should add at the very least they should add the black line booster to the statuettes. Yes. Yes, thanks. for some convergence for some amount of mm. currency. Mm. Sure. Uh, I I don't, you know, I'm not the biggest booster fan, but clearly people like Teapot and others see a lot of benefit in them, and I don't see why you would just remove them. It's certainly like well, metabolic primers which were added to the statuette list, but not the booster. Seems we were uh, odd. we were we were Illuminati guessing that they're removing it because they wanted to add the same amount of magic find or whatever as 
uh, as rewards to your account for later later content. Why do like, people you know, like the booster? Why do people like the booster? Because it, it makes yeah. it makes you it makes you better at playing the game, even though you're not actually better at playing the game. It's yeah, but is stuff. it just a world experience increase, or is there something that it um, actually? Well, it, well, the, honestly, the best part about it is probably it, it's it, like the black arm booster is kind of trash to a certain extent, but it, it's it's best in slot though because it's got, it's unique. It doesn't overlap with all the other boosters, so it's best in slot. But it's not actually oh, like okay. A, the what's actually on it is kind of bad. It gives you twenty five percent ward track speed or something like that. Then fifty percent, what is it? Yeah, like fifty percent gold find or something. Then a hundred percent magic find. It's like that's not really that good, but it, it, it's thirty minutes as well. So it is basically trash. However, it is best in slot, and therefore I need it. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it will make your reward tracks fast. Oh yeah, it gives you some more XP as well, I think. But it doesn't actually affect world experience, which is really oh god damn. Um, so yeah, it gives you like some XP, some magic find, some gold find, like a huge amount of gold find, and then a bunch of magic find as well. So it's not actually that good. However. It is optimal, my friends. And Does the Laurel booster still boosters. exist? No, they deleted those. And this is the thing. Mm -hmm. I honestly think they should be... Boosters should be in the gem store, man. Because boosters actually promote playing the game. And the, the way the gem store is right now... And actually the way... It's kind of segue to the topic, my friends. Uh, that the way rewards are in the game right now... And the way the, the, you know, the structure works... Is that you're, you're like highly incentivized to just find the most efficient gold farm grind it really hard, and then AFK for the rest of the time, buying black client keys and stuff in the gem store. That's just like, what the fuck? That, that's just lame. Like that, that's, how, that's actually what most people do though as well. You know, it's like, they just, oh, well, you know, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get my legendary, so I'm gonna grind the you know, domain of Istan for 50 days straight and eventually I'll get it. So, like, well, wow, that's, that's great. That's great gameplay, dude. And I think the having gold to gems and stuff like that and making everything available by gold, is great, but the thing is, it has some downsides, and this is one of those downsides. At least if you want to do the, got a lot of downsides. If you want to do the Griffin, you actually <laughs> have to go out on a cool quest, you know, right? And right. do all these cool tasks to get you unlock your Griffin. Awesome, mm -hmm. really. And there's plenty of other stuff like that in the game as well, right? I mean, you could do like legendary armor uh, and you know, stuff like that. Like, I, I, you know, and hey, you can't buy God of PvP unless you're an EG man. So like, it's it's kind of it's, it's stuff like that is really good, I think, but it, it, it's just there's not enough of it, and, and too much of it you can just buy gold for. Um, they started to st they started to bring back uh, karma a bit in in uh, some of the open world stuff. They, there was a period of time where they just forgot about karma as the as the exclusivity yeah. of actually completing things in game uh, uh, currency, and they just forgot about it for a while. But it's starting to come back now, and I think. The problem is a lot of people like saved up millions and millions of karma, so it can't be that that you, you can eat through it quickly a, though. It's true. Uh, let me let me tell you how. <laughs> so two things. I always <laughs> I always hear people say, uh, so I'm a huge fan of the wardrobe unlocks. And within the within the last chest or two, they also added a weapons unlock and an armor unlock. Now those things are great as long as you have a lot of stuff unlocked on your account. And one of the great ways to unlock a lot of weapons on your account is, uh, you know, get the common stuff, the uncommon, the rare. You can either craft it or just buy it from the trading post, which is probably cheaper. But there is a huge karma sink in uh, racial weapons. So if you want to go get the racial weapons, I think they're like 76,000 karma a piece or something like that. My numbers might be off there. But it's several million karma to unlock all those weapons. Now, let me tell you, if you're if you're using those wardrobe unlocks, you don't want to be unlocking karma weapons, right? How bad does that feel? <laughs> so, you know, go buy them from L.A. and Holbrek and so forth and unlock all those weapons. The other thing that ArenaNet could really do is 63,000, Joe, someone just said. That's cool. Mm. Um, the other thing that you can do is ArenaNet started adding a lot of these tonics. They started adding, they added a couple of weapons in Season 3. I wish they'd do more of that. And those were like 100,000 plus karma apiece. On top of that, they've been adding a lot of minis. Now, minis don't have a lot of value other than those who like to collect minis. However, if we ever see some sort of mini pet battle system in, minis instantly become more valuable to people. And that sync then becomes more meaningful. Uh, not only, you know, going forward, but in the past. And the other thing that I think that we're going to see in 2018 going forward is a tonics tab. 
I want a toys and tonics toolbox or tab, but I do think we're going to see a tonics tab. The second there's a tonics tab in the game, people will go back and spend all that karma to buy those old tonics and to eat that stuff up. So they started to put these karma sinks into the game. Some of them aren't as meaningful unless you really like those little toys and gadgets, but they could be more meaningful with a couple of collections or, you know, collection tabs added to the game. Okay, I have a question. <clears throat> so um, now that everything is moving slowly to some sort of own tab under the character panel, like for example, if the tonics go under a tonics tab, uh, all the items from the inventory slots are slowly moving to somewhere else. Do we actually need inventory slots in the game? Like, oh. like imagine <laughs> if everything had an own tab, like armor, well, everything, stats, you unlock them. Un now they need, they need, they need, they need that so they can sell you bag slots, dude. And actually, bag slots are one of the things that they should sell more of, honestly. They should sell more of the more of the, the bullshit. For example, why do we not have more bank tabs? Why do we not have more guild slots? Why? I mean, what, why? Yeah. Does Arena not I, like money? Do they hate money? That reminds me. I really gotta get some more uh, bag slots because every single one of my characters. To answer your question, Sampo, uh, I I don't think I will ever not need inventory slots because of the fact that I have like eight sets of exotic armor and weapons on each of my characters. And I have maybe 10 spaces of inventory left for anything that drops on any of my characters. So I'm pretty screwed in that regard. But um, yeah. The, I, I the other thing, sorry, Boots. Yeah, go ahead. The other thing I'll add is that if you look at all of the farms that are available in PVE, they all involve getting massive amount of loot over a short period of time where it's bags inside of bags. So just to, just to open all of those bags, people like to have large inventory slots. And in Path of Fire, Arena actually went out of their way to add super expensive, larger than 20 slot bags, which people will work on and collect, even though they don't need those extra slots past 20, because we haven't for many years, most of us anyway. Um, people will go to get that stuff just because it's best in slaughter, just because it's so large. Like Teapot. So, like Teapot. Yeah. Or like other people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like I like I like I like I like the inventory roleplay. Uh, it kind of trolls me. My inventory is trash, but no, I, I don't know. I like bag slots. I like it. You know, it's good. It's good. You, the, you can collect the collect the bags from the corpses of your victims in World of War. Go ahead. Sam. How is mm -hmm. the experience? How is the experience for new players when they don't? have much inventory space and they have all the salvage kits they had to run like they yeah. don't uh, it's, it's, it's it's frustrating pure, it's pure hell i remember it well yeah. actually yeah. it was like actual misery yeah. uh <laughs> it, it's funny because my nephew just started playing the game um and one of his biggest problems starting out is i don't have enough inventory space <laughs> yeah it was, <laughs> i think it was better at at the very launch of kill force 2 for sure. When yeah. we had a lot le less inventory problems because we didn't have all the, you know, the Heart of Thorns packs, inside mm -hmm. packs, and all that hassle. The three, the three pieces of advice. Uh, is Sampo still talking? He might have cut up. No. Okay. Uh, the the three pieces of advice I give to any new player that I that I force to play the game is number one. <laughs> number one buy the 18 slot bags on the trading post because those are the best amount to value uh number two uh, there, there's a little gear at the top that says deposit all because for some reason so many people don't realize that well for a good reason it's a very small little gear and the other one is uh right click <laughs> your right click your uh your salvage kit and say consume all or uh, oh yeah Damn, yeah. that was one hell of a feature Ooh. they added, dude. That was one of the best features they ever added in the game. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So good. One so of the good. other things I want to add to the... Um, a couple of things to the statuette. They removed... They finally removed finishers from Black Lion chests, which is a really good thing, because they're, with the exception of a couple of them, they're not worth very much. And if you still want to pick them up, then there's a statuette category for you to do so. The other thing is, and Deroyer brought this up in my video that I didn't talk about. Um, it's a bit of a shame that I missed it because it's a good topic. But I've been saying for a while, before we had the statuette program, 
that there needs to be some sort of exchange system for those things that have unlimited uh, contracts. Because you're going to get flooded with Merchant Expresses and Bank Expresses and so on from Black Lion Chests. But if you have the unlimited version, those become useless to you. Uh, they literally have almost zero value. Um, and I don't know what the conversion should be. You know, Droyer suggested a 10 to 1 ratio, so 10 trading posts for one statuette. Like Maybe it. it should be 50 mm. to 1. I don't know what the exchange rate should be, but some sort of exchange rate where you collect these things up and you can turn them into statuettes to get something mm. meaningful. Yeah, yeah, that was something uh, I meant earlier <laughs> when I took the Hearthstone example, where if you have items that you don't need, you could turn them into tokens. Like any items right. that's in Black Lives. Tomes Chest, of could... knowledge. Tomes, yeah. <laughs> well, that, no, because that might be a bit unfair, because you can get tomes of you can get tomes of knowledge from other sources. Though. I don't. That's think they could true. Do, yeah. So I don't think they could do it with tomes of knowledge. It's got to be exclusive stuff. But yeah, I, I definitely, yeah, because yeah, it, it, I, I can definitely imagine it. Like, it, I, I mean, I've been screwed a few times. Sometimes, you know, I, I buy a few keys, or people send me some keys to open on stream, right? And then it's sometimes it's just you get fucked. You know, you just get destroyed. I mean, I I got so someone gave me twenty five keys, and I opened three essences of luck. You know, the 500 Essence of Luck. It's like, wow, okay. Hey, wow, okay. It looks like a Luckily really good hates removed. me. <laughs> it's, it's funny yeah. because, um, you know, I came back from vacation. I got around and I released my Winter's Day, the Glacial Winter's Day one that had the Essence of Luck inside of it on Tuesday, which was the same day they reworked the Black Lion chest for the new one. Uh, so poor timing on my part, unfortunately. But I even said in that video, Essence of Luck needs to go. Luck is... There's a whole other discussion about luck on how that needs to be changed or, you know, moved forward a bit. But, <clears throat> you know, getting 500 luck in a Black Lion chest? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I could, I could kind of get it if it was 50,000, you know? Like, 50,000 luck, if you're not luck capped, would, would be kind of okay. Cause like, that, that would give you a nice amount, right? Like, 50,000 luck would be kind of okay. But, I don't know, some of the things do feel, like, horrifically unrewarding, honestly, like, sometimes. And it's just... Wow, I mean, this is one hell of a black clad chest. I got the revive orb. You know, oh yeah, Ooh. I got a merchant express. Oh yeah, it's. I, I, don't know. I understand that it's supposed to be like that to a certain extent, so you can actually lose a roll. You know, like, it's kind of like right. rolling a one. Like that's that's how it's supposed to be, but it's it's, it's more common than rolling a one. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's de it definitely would be the you know, that to to be able to kind of grind them back up, like. To dust them, you know, we kind of go in there, so you can you can get something. Uh, if you get yeah. some bullshit, you can you can get the good stuff eventually, right? <laughs> what's What's interesting to me is I, I seen I heard you guys say that you don't really like the one gold junk item, or the one gold junk item doesn't seem to mean too much. But really, that one gold is worth most of the is worth more than a lot of the drops that are in the <laughs> yeah, kind of category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because and and someone just brought this up. Zagar just brought this up. You, there are, you can get two tier five bags. You can get two tier six bags. And you can get an Alona chest, which I've said a couple of times now, those need to be combined into one drop. Because let me tell you, you get a lot of die kits and you get a lot of tier uh, tier four or tier five and tier six drops from Black Lion chests when you're opening them in mass. And, you know, don't get me wrong, if two tier six bags add up to over one gold, but not by a whole lot, generally speaking. Um, so the one gold reward is gen and and one gold is generally better than what you're going to get from any of the six die kits that they add to the common category. Now you will get lucky once in a while and you're going to get one of the special dies. And if you want to unlock that for your account that's great, but most of the time you're going to get something that's worth less than 15 silver out of those die kits and it's garbage. Hmm. I I've never been too hot on the on the Black Lion chest, not not because you know I'm not really into uh, RNG that much, but more because I, I've I've probably opened in the five years I played maybe 50 Black Lion chests overall, out of keys that dropped. Maybe I bought five here and there. I have never gotten anything good ever from those chests, and so I just I can't I can't think of them as a good investment for me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I just, same same reason why I can't buy any more of those um, mount adoption license because the first one oh, I got was yeah. the worst one oh. you could get, and I was like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, I can't. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There's uh, a there's an issue as well. Now, luckily, about three chests ago, they semi fixed this. Um, self style hair kits and total makeover kits used to be uncommon drops. Super terrible, right? So they moved the self style hair kit to common, um, which is still terrible in my opinion. <laughs> but if That's you look, look on the stats, if you look on, it's terrible. Trust me, I've got a million of them. It's, it's you know, okay. Than a revive orb. I totally disagree. <laughs> I, I disagree a thousand percent as someone who pugs an awful lot. Because you, you, you would just delete your character rather than restyle. Yeah, the you just make a new one. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, don't get me wrong. The, the the style hair kits have some value, but as an uncommon drop, no, 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 no way. That feels bad to get as an uncommon drop. So anyway, my solution is to remove the self style hair kit just to statuettes. Because if you want to buy these for statuettes, it's seven statuettes for a self-style hair kit, ten statuettes for a total makeover kit. So push the total makeover kit up to common and remove the self-style hair kit only to statuettes. Um, at least the total makeover kit allows you to totally remake the character and not just the hairstyle. And let's be honest, ArenaNet hasn't been super fast on releasing new hairstyles anyway. I know there's quite a few people who will complain ever since Path of Fire where humans got new hairstyles and nobody else did. So you you mentioned some something about there. a rare drop to do with statuettes that I don't know. Oh yes, we totally I totally forgot about yeah. that. So in the rare category, Ooh. oh this gets juicy. This gets juicy. Juicy. So if you want to buy a black line ticket, a full ticket from the uncommon category, it's 50 uh, statuettes. If you want to buy one gold key, which three gold keys is a rare drop, it's 50 statuettes. So three gold keys is worth 150 statuettes. One of the other rare drops is 25 statuettes. So you could get a rare drop of 25 statuettes, which won't even buy you an uncommon drop. Feels bad, man. Yeah, yeah, that's just that, that's that's a that's a cold shower what? in the morning. That's a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face, dude. Right in the face. There, what other rare drops are there? <laughs> Like, uh, so the other rare drops is the rare weapon set, um, okay. which you, you could argue how much value there is there right now. It happens to be the Jade Dragon skins. Okay. Now, there's there's a, there's another trick with the weapon skins is that if you don't want to unlock it for your account, you want value out of them, you need to hold on to them for about two months after they go out of rotation okay. because then the value will creep back up a little bit. Uh, you shouldn't sell them right away. You're going to lose a lot of money there. So uh, the other rare drops are three gold keys, which will get you three uncommon or better drops. There's always an, uh, a tonic that rotates in and out depending on uh, what it is that has tonic. some value. Yeah, the, the unlimited uh, tonics. Okay. There's, there's four different kinds that rotate in and out of black line chest, and those are about 75 statuettes each. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then there's they, they've increased it to four gathering nodes. So right now it's it's two advanced cloth, advanced leather. They're about 150 gold each. They've dropped a lot in value. The iron mining node, and there's another node in there right now. Now, except for advanced cloth and advanced leather, you can buy all of the other mining nodes, even iron, for 100 statuettes. So you can finally kit out your home instance. Uh, that does lower the value of those Pretty significantly. Really? That's a hundred chests, man. It's a hundred chests! Yeah, but I mean, on the trading post, if you want to go buy these things, there's a couple of them that are 400, almost 500 gold apiece, but a lot of them have dropped in value to 200, 100 something. So they're a lot more reasonable than they used to be if you're trying to, like, max out your home instance, which is a goal for a lot of people. Um, would it feel uh, better if the, like, the Merchant Expresses and Bank expresses what revive orbs. All, all if all those items were available on the status merchant only, only purchasable on the status mer mer merchant, and then, <laughs> then, then, um, like when you open a black line chest, you either get a really rare drop or you get a random number of statuettes. Would that feel better? Or like because it's really more stuff always feels better. better. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but of course they need to adjust all those mm. numbers. But like, it's really more about how it feels <clears> to the player than like 
all the numbers can always be adjusted to hmm. make the same amount of profit for it. Ain't it? That's a pretty Maybe. interesting idea, honestly. I, I think it would be a bit. Do you think it would be a bit weird to say, "Ah, yes, we, you know, we're, we're <laughs> you open black lion chests, which give you a, a random number of statuettes, which you then use to buy whatever you want." Yeah, I think be a little weird. That, that would be a little weird, but also it's a little bit too fair, don't you think? Isn't it? Because I mean, inherent right. within loot boxes, it is this unfairness, right? I mean, they're supposed to be unfair. That's the whole point. Uh, Filler. Because uh, if they were fair, then you know <laughs> they they wouldn't make enough money. So and I'm not I don't resent I don't resent that. I realize that some people even like that fact. Like some that's kind of to a certain extent that's the appeal of it, right? Is is the um, the risk the you know the the gambling is is a big component of why people even like to to open these. Yeah, because if if you delete the RNG, it, it kind of it deletes some enjoyment for some people, and it makes it a bit bland. You know, you say, "Oh well, you know, like, oh, I got five. Yeah, yeah, but you could you could still get like the rare items, like the mm. no, uh, gathering nodes and all yeah. uh, wardrobe unlocks and all all that stuff that people actually want from the chests. You could still mm. get those from the chests, but instead of getting those items that people really hate, Guess you would statuettes. get statuettes. Yeah. How many? Yeah, I think so, that's, that's a decent idea, actually. Yeah, it's, it's good. They could. What another thing they could do is roll all those items that people don't really want, like all the booster, not the boosters, but the um, uh, one-time use things that they have permanent versions of, uh, into a package that you could select from. So like, sure. yeah. So sure. like, yeah. We, but unfortunately, what that does is that reduces significantly the variability of the chests. And like, so you now, instead of having uh, a 5% chance of getting a revive orb, uh, you have a 25% chance of getting one of five different items that you choose from. And you get that much more often. It's a lot less interesting for some people. I, I will say this, though. This leads us into another discussion. So recently, about three chests ago, I think it was, um, what they did, excuse me, two chests ago was Winter's Day. <clears throat> what they did was they took, uh, it used to be that the weapon skins were rare and super rare drops. They adjusted these up to uncommon and rare, and they, they expanded the common drop table uh, quite a bit. What they did though was dilute the actual drop pool because they didn't they didn't adjust any of the drop numbers. So getting something like a black line ticket scrap is now even less of a chance in the common table because mm -hmm. there's so many more common items. Um, they haven't adjusted the actual drop rates for anything. And if you want an uncommon or better drop, that actually hasn't been adjusted either, which is which is part of the problem on why these are such a bad value is because you just get all this common chafe so often that. You know, it doesn't really amount to anything. Now, the statuette program helps with that. But again, with, for all the other reasons we've been talking about already, that needs to be... It's a good first step, but it needs to be updated and evolved a little bit, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, I think we're good with Backline Chess. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's... There, there's something else. There, there's, one other, there's one last thing to oh, talk about. Oh, one last thing. Well, just, just because I'm not sure how many people are really aware of this. But all common drops are not equal. So wardrobe unlocks, for example, are a common rare drop. Uh, the the really? drop rate on that, yeah, the drop rate on that is significantly lower than some of the other common items in there. So, for example, die kits and tier five and tier six bags have a much higher drop rate than something like the wardrobe unlock. The other thing to take into consideration is those two those two slots. It's a little bit more confusing now on how it works because it used to just be two lines of um of stuff that would drop but you're always going to get an account upgrade such as like a tome of knowledge which they removed but something that upgrades your account in that way and you're always going to get um i forget what they call the other category you're always going to get another category that is um f you know from something else so the wardrobe unlocks armor unlocks only drop from the account upgrade slot which I think is the second slot in the um, in in the the thing. The other one is always going to be like a Merchant Express or a Revive Orb or something to that nature. So there's two different common categories as well that these things drop from, and those common categories are not equal in their drop rates either. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of the thing about Blackland chests. You never know what you're going to get, boys. 
No, I think they're definitely going in the right direction, though. I think they're definitely going in the right direction. I agree. And, I agree. The statuettes are a good addition. The reason I have a sudden interest in Black Lion Chess is because... Well, I just to kind of just kind of finish stuff. It's because there's literally nothing else that I actually want on the gem store right now. Like it's kind of weird. Uh, did, it, did you get the uh, upgrade extractor? Uh, the the per the permanent one. Yeah. No, I, I think it's kind of useless. I, I don't. Not for me. Oh, so yeah, no. Sam, <laughs> Sam and Jesse would totally disagree with you yeah. on the value you can extract from that thing. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, ex it's extremely overpowered. <clears throat> it's a very overpowered item, but I'm too lazy, man. I, I can't, I can't do that shit. I, I'm, I'm too lazy for it. It's, it's not a. To me, it would be an. In it wouldn't be a convenience item. It would be an inconvenience item. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I would rather just have another ascendant set than have you know the, to play with this thing you know and yeah you can make gold from it and you make gold from it because you can pull the four sigils out you know, stuff like that right but uh, it's not doesn't the doesn't the upgrade extractor make the item soul bound so you can't sell it on the trading post you can, sell, you, can sell, you, you can pull, pull the upgrade out and then salvage it though oh you can use a black line um thing or something you know so the trick yeah yeah <clears throat> the, you the can trick put it is... in the mystic forge maybe right you can mystic yeah. forge it yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So people like Choxy or Sam who like to do that stuff in mass. Fireproof is another guy who likes likes doing that kind of stuff. Uh, those guys can really profit from this unlimited item. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it's it is kind of overpowered, but it, it's in my opinion, it's not really that useful. But I mean, Arinek, hook me up. Give me a reason to do it. If if they put boost, if they put like. If they put new fresh black boosters, boosters, not necessarily black lion boosters, if they put unique boosters, seriously, this is something I think the game actually needs. I think this would make them so much, they would make a lot of money if they made stuff like this. There's boosters that boost a specific game, man, like a PvP booster, world versus world booster, like a, like a raid booster. Hell, why not a raid booster? Why not just like have raid magic find or something like that? Or like dungeon magic find or fractal magic find. Why not have a fractal booster that gives you more relics? Like, why not have specific boosters for specific game modes? That people want to, it, it, people might cry pay to win, but fuck it, come on, man. Like the gem store already kind of is. I mean, that, that it, but not really though. It, it's like boosters are, are inherently paid. There's a period of time. There's like a month in the beginning of the game where people like, oh, these this armor booster in the in the gem store is pay to win, and then everybody just was like, it's not. Yeah, yeah it's not exactly <laughs> it's, right. It's like come on, you can get that five percent damage. Booster. Uh, you can already buy. You can already get some like magic find and XP find XP boost, right? That, I mean, if, if that if you think that's pay to win, then pff, yeah, whatever, just go away. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think it's. Um, I don't think it's pay to win. I think stuff like that is actually really good because it promotes playing a specific game mode and uh, playing it to you know get the rewards in that game mode. Don't think it's pay to win at all, especially when it just is like accelerating the rewards. Honestly, I think that's a, in my opinion that's a perfectly acceptable thing to uh, sell. Uh, in 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 the in the gem store is something that will accelerate your rewards, but it doesn't yeah. sell in the gem store or put in the black line chests. Both, both, both. I would say sell in the gem store more than put in the black line chest because if you're trying to get people who enjoy PvP to enjoy buying black line chests, that's not the way to do it because they'll feel like they need to buy black line chests, and there's an extremely large amount of items there that a, a, a regular PvP player wouldn't care about at all, and it's just. They would much prefer just to be directly in the gem store, I think. But it what's would the, encourage what's, what's PvE players to get into PvP, I suppose, if they get a PvP booster. So, what's, yeah. What's the point of buying any booster that gives you, like, gold back? Because everything you buy from gem store, if you use, uh, like, if it's real money or in-game money, it's always gold that you're losing. So if you're buying, like, a gold gain booster... You're never gonna get your gold back. Gold, gold gain is gold seventy-five gain. percent more gold to lose gold. <laughs> gold gain is just yeah, a massive red herring. Like for... It's a huge red herring. Like gold gain basically does nothing. It's one of one of Arena Net's best kept secrets. Now, gold gain it's is worse is, than magic find. Is literally worthless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it just affects the the gold you get from killing monsters. So you know when you get like twelve copper, you get like thirty copper instead. You know it's it, it's trash. It's complete garbage. It's, yeah, but even yeah. the reward track ones, like, aren't you just mostly like in the end you run reward tracks just to gain just more to get gold. gold? Yeah, it's a good point to a certain extent. But I mean, that that's why I'm in, more interested in the stuff that gives you other progression as well, right? Like, so the reward track will be a nice bonus because you can get your reward track. There's also some unique stuff. You can get unique skins. You'd be basically paying to get skins faster. Um, 
or you know, I don't know, dungeon tokens or something. I don't know, or or mystic clovers. You can get you can get for free though, which is kind of just gold. But you know, there's 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 a certain element of that. But there are things oh. you, you you have to grind out to get that stuff, right? Uh, like map currency. You, you can just yeah, you, you, all the stuff you can get. But I mean, yes, yeah, so at the mm. end of the day, it is kind of just gold. But to a certain extent, there, there there are some things you can't get um, by just like raw gold. Legendary you have to, have to play the game, uh, and, and it, it's kind of the other progression as well. The, the other progression as well, like fractal relics, can't you can technically buy for gold, but you really wouldn't want to. Uh, but uh, stuff like that, like fractal relics, world versus world XP, um, PvP. Well, maybe not PvP rank. Uh, eh, yeah, sure, PvP rank because you can already you can know you can't boost PvP rank in any way, can you? I don't think. Uh, I think you so can. May, no, ca can you? Can you get more rank points? I don't think you can boost the amount of rank points you get. It's always... oh, maybe it was just like during the weekends. Maybe it's, I was yeah. gonna say, wasn't there a, like when they were running the special PvP events? Didn't they have like a, a rank boost or something? Maybe. I think so. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm not sure if they want to boost that though. Actually, I'm not sure. Well, rank is pointless, right? Because... <laughs> well, you get those finishers, man. Yeah, but I mean, like, okay, you know, once you get to 80, it just keeps going. It doesn't really mean anything, right? Like. I suppose that's true. No. True enough. True enough. Like yeah. if I'm rank eighty and you're rank one eighty, it just means you played more after rank eighty than I did, mm. right? It doesn't really. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it's a measure of how much you've played, I suppose, but that doesn't really equate to skill or anything, mm. right? Mm. It stops at eighty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, rank doesn't really matter that much. But then there's the kind of like, uh, you could you could you do like so? How how about a raid boost? How could a raid booster work? I don't. You, you, the only way you could do it is you'd have to have like it affects the RNG of the raid drop. I don't think people would like that. I don't would think get we can more do that. More magnetite charge. More I, magnetite. I mean, okay, so you maybe Phantom so you have to do says, less. Bosses, yeah, but you I guess? would have. Because uh, yeah, the cap, because right? You can't the cap. Yeah, yeah, the cap. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Phantom says it's not totally useless because you need to be ranked twenty to play ranked. That's uh, true. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ectos are the structure of PvP currency these days, yeah, man. Oh, I thought I moved on to Mystic Coins. Everyone's doing stuff in Mystic Coins these days, dude. Raid boost, it gives you a um, twenty-five cent chance to drop another item from raid boss chest. I mean, I, I mean, why not, right? I mean, ah, <laughs> no. But the thing is, it, oh, so no, no, that, that would feel so shitty, dude. That would feel so shitty. It, I don't think they could do that. And that twenty-five percent boost gets you the armchair. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't think they can play with that because that, that's. Um, <laughs> That's a that's a five k gold drop right now, so they they can't play. I think maybe they can't do that. So so how uh, there's one last item to talk about that I totally forgot. Add it to the common category, and that's the Tyrian Exchange voucher. And this uh, one has a little dungeon. bit dungeon. Yeah, this has a little controversy surrounding it because it's how far are they going to push it? Um, and I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about this. So you can exchange the voucher for three hundred of any dungeon currency. Okay. You can get three hundred of you can get three hundred geodes, three hundred bandit crests, five hundred of the heart of thorns currencies, one thousand of either the unbound or volatile magic, thirty mosaics, two hundred fifty trade contracts, or one hundred fractal relics. Ooh. I don't so know. Where can you get this? And that's, that's a, chest, it's a common yeah. drop from black line chests. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's yeah. odd. That's an odd choice. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a. This is the kind of thing I really don't like. It's 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 the opposite of a booster, right? It's just disincentivizing you to even play the game. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's just. Yeah. Ooh, uh, I mean, uh, is uh, someone in chat said yeah, like the end game for most players is AFKing in Lion's Arch, opening black line chests, and. I don't know that that kind of kind of sad if you ask me. Like, and it, it's kind of it's kind of war it, it's scarily true, isn't it? Like it, the game, te well, the casual side of the game just tends towards yeah, you kind of grind out gold, then you buy something, and then you can just open that shit. I don't know, man. It's just it's fucking fucking trash, dude. It's it's. I I kind of like it. I, I kind of totally like understand. it. Yeah, I, I totally understand where you're coming from, and I agree with all the points you're making. Selfish Inks is like, you know what? Kind of like it. I can speed up how many chalk weapons I can get just to finish that collection. I can finish dungeon collections without that having to do does dungeons it do, anymore. Does I mean, it it's do bad. Crystalline? It's not good for the game, but 
Does Agreed. it do crystalline ore? No, uh, no. I don't think so. Okay. No, it okay. It's only, it's only, it's only, it's, only, it's not, um, it, does, it won't give you materials, only account, cur uh, um, map currencies. Right. Oh, yeah. but you said but, it did, it did the map currencies for... Oh, yeah. But those are, no, it, does, it does airship, it's an aerium, right? But it does it's, it's, it does leyline crystals, aerium, and airship parts. It doesn't do the jagged stand. No. Stuff. Okay. Because yeah, that would have been a little bit of a kick in the pants for me, who spent like 40, <coughs> 50 hours or something like that grinding it for the uh, for the um, uh, leadership runes, and then <laughs> and then uh, it would have been better just to buy five. Uh, there's no, there's no <laughs> world versus world currency in there either. Just to mention that. Um, mm. I, but here's the question, and this is where a lot of people are scared of: Where does this stop? They've got fractal mm -hmm. currency in there, hundred hundred fractal relics. People are afraid that this could move into raids or you know other other areas of like world versus world currency, for example, other areas of the game. Mm. Legendary insights. Legendary, yeah, 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 yeah. But seriously, though, no, I, don't, I, I, I think that is a bit of a slippery slope, uh, you know, a bit of a fallacy there. I don't think it's going to go that far. But yeah, it, it's kind of a, you know, are they going to, you know, stop you? You don't even have to play the game anymore. You can just gamble. You can just gamble for black line chess, and you can just play. The game will play itself for you. I think that is kind of worrying because. Uh, if this goes further, then maybe you won't see people in the new maps, right? Because they'll just they'll just be able to play the game. They'll be able to get the currency without even doing anything. It's just I don't know. I, I don't. I, I see, think that is that's a bit of doomsday stuff. There, I think that's extremely unlikely, sure, sure, especially with how small but... the how small the um, rewards really are. Especially the relics, by the way. Seriously, that's fucking re hundred relics. Do you know how many relics yeah. I need, Inks? Do you know how many I need? I don't know. Hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. Yeah. I totally forgot about that whole, like, yeah. I'm so far behind in fractals that I need 100 million, yeah. like, I... <laughs> I need 100k fractal, I need 100k relics, okay, for my fractal god title, seriously. That, I, I, that means if you do, if you, well, if, I, if I'm gonna do tier 4 and both challenge modes every day, which I try and do, right? Mm -hmm. That will take me about half a year at this point. Arena likes that. That's good for them. Yeah, no, I I like it as well. But damn, mm -hmm. I mean, it, but <laughs> the, my, those black line chests are not going to help with that. That's not going to help at all. You know, it's uh, just uh, it's you know, for me, I, I guess I'm okay with it as long as it's older mm. content. Um, the the problem is, and and many people have brought this up, like the Heart of Thorns maps. If you're giving away a lot of like airship parts and so forth. That means people are less likely to go back and do like those events if they want those rewards, right? They'll just gamble up a little bit yeah. of black lion chests and and buy exactly. what they need. Exactly, and right? that, that to me is such a shame. I, I don't is. like that direction. That's not how it should be. Uh, you should, instead of instead of being able to just buy playing the game, it should be giving you things that make the game more fun. You know, and that's why I think boosters is a great idea. Like stuff that accelerates us. You don't have to grind. You can just enjoy the content and get rewarded for it in a short time. So you can either grind and you can kind of enjoy it a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, this is kind of fun. This is a kind of a little fun open world boss or, or whatever. You know, oh, this what is about fun. a booster that made a confetti explosion every time you killed an enemy? But what do you get from the confetti explosion? Nothing. No, I don't want. What, what, the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what if you get a consumable item that you can use to reset your raid save, so you can like raid more than once per week? Raid oh, boss. Woo! That's also. That's also okay. Okay, we're People really treading into the. the yeah, this is getting very. Whoa, whoa. We're, we're treading into the pay to win territory for a lot of these things. Yeah. Is the problem. Well, you, uh, there already is an item like that, and it's called buying another account. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good point. And I, good I do point. this. I, I already clear on uh, several accounts a week, so I kind of do that, and it's actually quite good money. Like, the amount of money I've made from my old accounts at this point vastly crushes the amount of um, you know money I spent on them. If you, you know, you, if you can, I, you know, if I convert the money I spent on the account in into gems, right? Like, okay, this is how much gold it costs to buy this account, but it was actually money. <laughs> The amount of gold I've made out of these accounts is crazy. Some of these accounts have legitimately made me thousands of gold at this point, and it, it feels good, man. It feels good. Uh, because, I know, you, you get a bunch of gold every week, and you get ghostly infusions, you get the tier 6 materials from, uh, from, uh, you know, from the laurels and the mystic coins, and then soon, boys, it's, it's Chinese New Year. It's the new New Year. Arena, put oh it in the boy. game right now. Please hook me up. I got 17 alt accounts, ain't it? 
So <laughs> let's go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Let's go, oh, ain't it? God. Seventeen all together. Oh yeah, ain't it? Let's go. Hook me up. Um, hook me up. So, so first of all, when do you think that's going to drop? That's got to be soon, right? What the uh, well lunar neuter festival? Oh, oh yeah. Soon. Well, I I saw a Twitter post by Denver, right? that shaman who said that it's going to be twenty third. Well, the next patch will be twenty third. Right. So that, okay, so I don't Friday, think that's going to be the Lunar New Year. Friday, it's, February 16th is the Chinese New Year. Which oh, is no, it won't be the 23rd the, uh, then. Uh, it won't be the 23rd. Yeah, it's February. So, yeah, sure. Lunar New Year is usually, what, like a week or two before mm. then? Right? Whatever follows the cadence. Like the two-week. So beginning of February will probably be Lunar New Year then. Mm. Here's my question. Are they going to increase the luck cap for Lunar New Year? Yes, please. Please are in net. Please! Oh, wait, I'm, I, I'm going on go with one moment. I'm going on efficiency, boys. Just one second. Just give me one moment here right now. Luck. Let me search for that. Luck. Oh, no, please, let me search. Okay. So I have... Oh my god. I have... How, wait, how, how can I tell how many stacks I have? I Yeah, I have a lot of stacks of, of 250 luck. Of, of, of uh, exotic luck. I have an entire character. My level 5 necromancer hybrid build. His entire bags, and they've been upgraded as well, is purely full of exotic stacks of, two, uh, of essence. Are you just looking at your characters? You yes. looking at your character? Yeah, on efficiency. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 30, uh, 40 stacks of exotic luck. And I have some on other characters as well. How the heck can you see that? Because now I'm curious how many I have. On efficiency, Gil was too efficiency. I have zero. Oh, grouping to none. Oh, okay, okay. I have eleven thousand uh, four hundred and forty-five exotic essences of luck. Thank you. I don't uh, even have the cap. You fucking pleb. <laughs> Hell out of here. <clears throat> now, so, the, and certainly, there's going to be some people who are not capped. But and don't get me wrong. About two years ago, when I hit cap. There wasn't much point in asking ArenaNet about it or complaining about it because not many people have hit it. But the, the longer time goes on, and especially by now, I think a lot more people are hitting luck cap naturally just by playing the game and um, salvaging things. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I've got like three or... Th uh, I've got a lot of hours <laughs> in the game. Yeah. And I haven't hit luck cap yet. I'm, I'm at like uh, two something, but... Uh, but I, and I, I'm someone who plays the game a lot more than probably a lot of other people. So I, I don't know. I'm probably in the 70 percentile or something like that. And I'm not hit luck cap yet. So I, I doubt that that many people have. Compared yeah, I'm to on the same boat with boats that yeah. I have also played a lot. I've got 30, I've got 34, <laughs> I've got 34 stacks of exotic luck and 24 of the 500 lux. There you go. Okay. I only got 12 of the 500 lux. Feels bad. Yeah. Just has nothing to do with it. Um, I'd love to see an increase in the cap. <laughs> I'd love to see it. I, I think really that's would. the biggest. Yeah, I think that's Just the, hit the it to 400%. Thing. Why not for it? Because, I mean... There's no reason for it not to. I don't care. Yeah. That, that's... But, but, yeah, because luck I, is... I luck, luck, cap, but... luck does, like, fuck all anyway, really. I mean, it... it and it, you know what? <clears throat> you know what kills me is last year, um, when I was in when I was in Spud Club, I gave them 3,500 lanterns. Because it's like, you know, you get one mm. lantern per the luck, right? Okay. So, 3,500 lan 3, lanterns of luck into the club. Because I had nothing to do with it. You know, there's no use. Mm -hmm. I Yeah, there's no reason for not to. So, an increase from 300% to 400% is what? Like, that's technically not... <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of exactly how much of an increased chance of you getting good gold is in that case because uh an exotic drop is what percentage wise on a roll table usually oh i, oh, yeah. I don't know dude exactly I, I will say this though even uh, and teapot might have better analytics for this because i think he's done it more often than me but even with lunar new year boosting your luck up to what is it like 800 something mm. is the max that you can get to maybe it's closer to 900 yes you do see an increase in the amount of gold you get but it's not a crazy amount. It's not yeah. like it's, uh, you know, a game-breaking amount of gold that you're getting from being at no. 300 to 800. And, and the <laughs> fact that 
they removed the Black Lion boosters means that there's room to improve the luck cap. Yeah, I still have four <laughs> saved for Lunar New Year. Although it doesn't, it is quite significant actually. If you boost it, if, if you opened Divine Lucky Envelopes with no magic find, I think you get a return of something like, <clears throat> on average, 1.3 gold or something. Something like that. Maybe even less, maybe 1.25. If you crank your luck up to max, with th over 1000% with Silver Wastes, every modifier, boom, 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 boom. You can actually get like, over one and a half gold back even, so it's pretty crazy. It, it, it's quite sign it's it's significant, but not significant. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. In the open world, it does make a difference. Sometimes you go, damn, that was a nice drop, because you'll drop a bunch of tier six from one mob or something, right? Like, that can happen, because if you have increased magic, you oh. Yeah, I really don't. I really don't notice it that much. I Does don't know. luck affect like bags and stuff you could buy off TP to open? Some things, it, it, as Ajax only, is saying, yeah, it does ones. affect the un unidentified gear. Right. So, so I would really enjoy to. I would enjoy it if somebody who's already luck cat maybe or or has I don't know. It doesn't matter how much like they have now. Open four thousand unidentified gears of a certain level sell it all, figure out how much they make from that, and then boost their luck to as high as they could get with boosters and do the same thing and do the calculation of how much uh, the profit, is. what the difference is, yeah. Well, Ajax is saying yeah, that, that some people who put 10k in make 3k back, make profit of, 10, of 3k. Okay. Right, but, but Boots is saying, what is the difference between 300 luck? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And whatever the maximum you, luck yeah. you can currently get by doing all the tricks to boost your luck right now. Mm. That would I be really an interesting like to analytic to see what the uh, yeah, what yeah. the difference is. Yeah, definitely. And people could definitely do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have the technology, Boots. We have the technology yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah. I just don't have the money. We have the technology. <laughs> Gold. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. <laughs> so so I, I know that something else got added to the gem store recently, uh, which... Looks pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know, Inks. Did you do some video on it yet? The the oh um, the garden gardens. Plot. No, that'll yeah. that'll be coming within like um, Monday or Tuesday. Is going to be jackal pups, and then garden plots and current events is after that. I saw on one of the tables of things you could buy as a uh, as an item was a Xingjie rose or Xingjie lily. Yeah. So uh, is that Cantha confirmed? No. It's always Kantha confirmed. <laughs> Kantha was confirmed day one of Guild Wars 2 release. Yeah, yeah. And that's just how it goes. We know we're going there. Boom. We have to. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, yeah. I, so, so I understand it that you have to do stuff in the open world in order to unlock some of the things you can plant in the garden. Is oh, the, gar we, the garden, dude. We haven't talked about the garden. We're talking about the garden yeah. right now. We talked about so... the garden. I just drank. We should have talked about the garden way earlier, dude. There's an actual farming simulator in the game, dude. I'm a little oh upset about God. the garden. Oh, wait. Well, okay. You're Good. Do it. About just the garden. lay it down a little bit. Man. Just a tiny bit. You're a little I, bit I, upset I, about most things, though. So yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I, I get easily a little bit upset about a lot of things. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. I So... The way it works currently is you need to spend at least a thousand gems, uh, and you get a garden plot. And when you get that garden plot, it allows you to plant four plants, and there's a collection you can do. Now, the collection is not worth any achievement points, but you run around Tyria uh, gathering different uh, – there's a bunch of different uh, plants that you need to gather. So the top tier things, unfortunately, are not there. For example, like flax is not part of it. Snow truffles is not part of it. But you can get things like, uh, I'm trying to think, you know, garlic is one of them or something, potatoes, uh, lemongrass. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are generally worth the lower end. So the only thing that really annoyed me about this is not even the price of a thousand gems. You can buy two garden plots so far for a thousand gems. Mm -hmm. There's obviously room for a third one, and really Arena Net could just keep expanding forever. There's no reason to stop at three, really. Uh, but there's already a spot for a third one that's not available to buy mm. just yet. So you know that's coming. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> there's probably going to be more than is, three as well. There's going to be more than three. <laughs> my thing is, is I feel like they should have given you a, a, a collection, a quest, or something for mm. free. For just a tiny little plot. Two little, just two little nodes. You don't even need to make a full plot, right? Two little nodes that starts the collection, that gets players out there playing this 
collection content, you know, and that entices you to want to grow the garden even further. Because the way that they did it was they just locked all of this stuff behind a thousand gems to start it, and then you can spend two thousand gems or eventually another thousand gems in the future. I just feel like it would have been maybe better for Arena Net to tease people a little bit with it, give them one or two little plant spots, let them do the collection and run around. It's not worth any AP. Let them run around and see what the vendor has and 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 that kind of stuff. And then the people will be like, okay, well, I'm going to spend a thousand gems because I want a bigger garden. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's interesting how people really like the new garden system when, as far as I know, all the other nodes in home instance have always had that, that not many people really like them. But it seems like everyone wants the card now that it's more interactive. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think stuff like um, that is good, though, because it's, it's, instead of just being this very bland, like, ah, well, you know, here's, you know, you can come and press F on this thing. It's a little bit little bit, um, little bit, bit more dynamic, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a bit more fun. It's like on yeah. the gem, so you buy a bit of, you buy, you buy a little story, don't you? You buy a little bit of entertainment uh, for yourself. I think that is, it's a, it's a nice way to go about it, isn't it? And they kind of started going in that direction with the, um, what was it, like the the Black Lion, the guy, you know, the, the, the role play thing where you can kind of send him out and he'll go and gather stuff for you or something like that. And you can kind of pick what you board. want, right? Well, yeah, yeah the board. board, the board, yeah. And so I think that <laughs> stuff like that, actually, it's got a little bit of flair to it, a little bit of flavor. Um, that's nice. I like that. And hopefully they continue to, to make some like I, I, I honestly, yeah, I might even buy that stuff. Honestly, I might. I, I feel it. like I, I just feel like stuff like this. They should give you a taste. I agree play, with you. Inks. Give players a little bit of a taste. Yeah, I agree. and then and then hope that they get hooked and buy, buy, buy. Yeah. I, I, because those people I who are buying a thousand or two thousand gems are still going to buy. So you're still <laughs> going to make that money. I'm just wondering. I, I agree with you, Winks, and I I think Tipa's right too that I like it as a concept. Um, I, I agree with you, but I think that maybe if they did do that taste and then say, hey, everything else is going to be gem store stuff, there would be even more, there would be like uh, more people upset about it than currently, than it's just completely locked behind the gem store. People would be like, why give us this this if you're going to only update it in any way, shape, or form in the gem store? This is obviously supposed to be in the game because sure, you gave but... me this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but sure, but the fight back to that is, but we gave it to you for free. It just takes you longer than somebody who's paying more money. Yeah. And you can say that about a lot of items in the gem store, right? Mm -hmm. Do you need to get the seeds each day to plant? Okay, no. So how it works is uh, you can plant any number of combination. You can plant like a different seed in each one if you want to. Once you farm it for the day, it automatically starts to regrow unless you want to okay. plant a different kind of seed. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. seeds don't cost you anything. So it's not, it's not like this costs you money to plant seeds or whatever. Now, they did introduce, I think it was four new materials that you can plant, uh, which are used in the new recipes that come with this. Now, there was a little bit, bit of black backlash because there are these guaranteed unidentified dyes that you can get. It's not clear when you buy the garden plot until you complete everything and see the recipes, I guess unless you're checking online ahead of time now, that these uh, guaranteed unidentified dyes don't include any of the Black Lion exclusive dyes. So people bought it thinking, oh, I'm going to unlock some of my Black Lion exclusive dyes. Those are the only dyes that I need in the game. Well, it doesn't actually do that or work for that. And really, the biggest benefit that I can see are you can create two-hour primers for your food and utility. That's a nice little bonus. Yeah. I'm going to say that I think the reason why they put it in Gem Store and didn't give you a taste is probably because if they wanted it to be something part of the game to begin with, it would have been a new profession, a farming profession, that was introduced in the expansion and hyped as such. And since they decided not to do that and stay away from that entirely, they decided probably we'll just make money off of it this way uh, and expand it. It would have been a lot more expanded than it currently is. Well, and Ajax is speculating that, you know, 500 chef might be coming and this is somehow involved in that. If that's true, 500 chef is even more mm. of a reason to give you, you know, you get to 500 chef, 
you unlock your two slots. Now yeah. maybe 500 Chef isn't ready yet, but um, I, I just think that they missed a trick here with people and maybe selling more of these. Or, as someone else said, just getting more people involved in the home instance to begin with. Uh, by making you go there every single day and and looking at this stuff. How do you think or 500 Chef goes? What do, What is 500 Chef? Ascended food? Lo longer food? <clears throat> longer food or more powerful food, though? That's the question. I doubt it's going to be more... Maybe because they kind of... Uh, no, recently, they, didn't yeah. they? Recently, they nerfed a lot of different foods. Yeah. So if they want to, they could probably make more different food that's not necessarily more powerful, mm. but has some yeah. of the options that you lost pre previously, I or new options that. that yeah, it, it, uh, or just longer food too. This is kind of sad, that's honestly. It. But what, what, one of the things I really like when, whenever there's a new patch, I always try and check out the food, you know, because say, oh, yeah, I, I love, I, I, it's just funny. Like I, I like the foods, like the, the cool little things. I'd like more. I, I kind of like more spicy food, you know? Instead of just raw stats, have kind of a cool effect, you know? Like, you, you can do something like, well, I mean, Boots did a bad build about this with them, the, the the chili things, like the chill, or give might, right? And stuff like that. The, like, food that only works in, in with one class would be kind of like a funny gimmick, if you ask me. Because right now, it's very, very boring, isn't it? It's kind of like, oh, well, you know, if you're a condi class, you play the pizza. If you're a power class, you play the butternut squash soup. You know, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a little bit of variance in there, like, use some damage reduction food and stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. But I, I don't know, it's a bit it's a bit flat, isn't it? You know, we, we could come up with some better, we could come up with some more exciting foods, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. Let, yeah. Legendary food and you can stat swap. When you, you can have... make custom, <laughs> you can custom and make food. you have food. aura. You can you custom aura. food, so you can, you can stat swap the food, dude. Imagine that. Endless food that you can stat swap. That would be kind of funny, man. Food that gives you an aura, though. I mean, they already have that with the ghost... The ghost, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the, strawberries and yeah stuff. you turn into a ghost which is kind of but cool. i would love to see more of that mm. yeah yeah it'll be nice actually it'll be pretty exciting it'll be interesting stuff yeah. 500 chef will be fun or what about food that's boosters magic Booster magical food. soup magical soup sure they already have that magical kind of. soup 50 percent magic find i'm not very bars Boom. oh no but even better than that even better than that <laughs> better 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 <laughs> Magic soup gives you fifty percent. It just, it's just a booster. Actually, is what I'm describing here. No. Yes. You want another booster? All right. We get. <laughs> Cook boosters. Mount speed. Yeah. Mount oh, speed. Mount increasing food. Mount you can food. give food to your mount. mount. Makes the food ten percent. Uh, sorry, food. Makes the mounts twenty percent faster, or can fly longer, or something. You know, like I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be totally surprised because we do have now. They the the food is actually like a, an XP boost. I think. Yeah, but they have like yeah. raptor treats and stuff, right? You feed a raptor a treat a day. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. I guess he's something like that. Yeah. Sure, what the heck? Food for what experience? No, not food for what experience. Food for what experience, but it would have to not use a food slot because um, food is really important in World vs. One. If you come in World vs. One and you don't use the correct food, get the fuck out of my squad now and then quit the game. But that's well, a, then but that's a good the game. point, actually. Hold on a second. That's a good point. A World vs. World food that or food in general that has those base stats that all other food has and the boost then plus boost. Yeah. yeah 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 you're right boots you're right yeah. what they that's should do nice. is that's uh, nice. ascended an ascended world versus world food called all you can eat clam bake it just sets out a table and it allows you to afk three times longer wow. while you're in world versus world wow <laughs> <laughs> So, speaking of things that are coming to the game or in the game, uh, there has been an update to uh, the current events, I understand. Yes. Yeah, I'm embarrassed yeah. to say I, I have absolutely no idea what's happened. Yeah, wow. you, please tell us what's <laughs> happened. Listen, Teapot, you need to come out you need to come out of raids for like two, you know, maybe an hour a day. It's all yeah, you need to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Breathe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Inks, Inks, tell us everything about the current events. Sampo can tell us. Sampo, tell us everything no about idea. the current events. You have no idea. I just checked. I think they have <laughs> just changed the name. Have they added any new side stories? I don't know. There's, dude. I've never seen the event. It seems like they only renamed the. Uh, All right. So what? In, so what they did Rachid. was uh, following Daybreak. Of course, you need to play the Daybreak story to perhaps understand a little bit what's going on. But if you there's an event that happens 30 minutes past the hour every single hour in one uh, in one of the starter maps plus Gendarin Fields. So if you're in Metrica Province or Caledon Forest and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so essentially, actually, 
there's an extra one that I'm missing. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, You're attacking all the major cities, correct? Well, the the zones outside the cities, right? Because they haven't gone inside the city, right. which is weird because the portals seem to be able to open anywhere. Why not just open inside of a city? Yeah, can you bypass the defenses, man? Yeah, but yeah. You, you know, Joko is uh, you know he just does it. He doesn't give a fuck. That's why. That's why he's not known. <laughs> I mean, he's not known for his tactics, is he? Really? No. Nah. Well, he, he's known for being he, comic didn't relief. He divert, didn't he divert, divert that uh, that river in order to yes. win the war back in Alona? Well, that was a war. That's that's a pretty good tactic. That is a pretty good tactic, actually. Okay, maybe he's he, no. I mean, how could I possibly say it? praise Joko? Genius praise strategist. Joko. Yeah. So basically what you do is you need to do the achievement at least one time. Uh, there's basically a bunch of um, mobs that spawn with champions and, and so forth that come out of these portals all over the map. You go and you kill them. Make sure you stay to the end of each event. This will unlock an achievement that unlocks a bunch of other achievements. Now, one of them is building a device that will tell you which maps he's going to be invading because he, he doesn't invade every single map every 30 minutes. And that shaman actually has like a chart as to which maps, or you know, he figured all that stuff out, uh, which maps are actually being invaded every hour, every thirty minutes past the hour. So uh, there's a whole little quest where you need to run around, go to different areas, collect different things for this um, Asura, who is going to make a device that allows you to predict when Joko's armies are going to attack. There's a little bit of a catch if you're an Asura, an engineer. Or an Iron Legion char, you can actually bypass the one-day waiting period. So normally you would complete this quest that he sends you on to collect these items. And then you need to wait a day, a full reset, and then come back to him to get the item. If you're an Asura, an Engineer, or an Iron Legion char, you can skip that day by helping him complete the item right away. And that will complete that achievement. The other two achievements, one of them is Zone Defense, so you need to do the activity in each of the zones at least one time. And the other one is uh, it's worth 30 achievement points and it's redoing the event in any zone uh, 10 times in total. Now you can get 50 AP if you do all this stuff. It's quite a bit of AP, yeah. considering Path of Fires, uh, the amount of AP you get from that. So you get 50 AP by doing all this stuff. You know, it's not super difficult or anything like that, but it's just fun to get together in the maps in a Zerg and crush stuff basically did arena net ever mention this stuff or is this yes yeah. so in the patch notes on uh january 9th they said something there was one word line that said like uh joko's invading it i think uh un undead something. attacks on has have increased on major cities or something like that something like that yeah yeah but most people don't read patch notes like the Alta Caswell people. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, though. That's a, it's a good point to bring up because all the current events that happen in the game have had something similar to this, where it's just a small, tiny patch note, hmm. and, uh, and people either find it in-game because of the patch note, or there's been times where there has been no note in the patch notes, uh, and people find random stuff happening. Like, remember a long time ago, people were like, hey, why is there this invisible wall? in in Keswick's hills yeah uh and so but the question is how many people know about this kind of stuff i i know i personally love the fact that they do just a small note in the patch notes and people have to go out and discover what's going on but that's only because i read the patch notes and i doubt the entire guild wars 2 populations does that so i wonder if that is the best strategy but at the same time, I think it's a good strategy. I mean, if you're in those maps, there is an announcement that comes across the map, like Joko's writing, right. whatever. If right. you look in the LFG, you'll see groups forming for this stuff. But you're right. For those who don't go to Reddit, who don't watch Tea Time, what's wrong with you? You should be watching Tea cool. Time. Cool. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's a staple. You know. <laughs> it's a staple, dude. <clears throat> for those people who are maybe not so involved, you know, with, you know, the outside of the game community, and don't read patch notes, and I'm sure there's lots of people who fall into that category. Uh, they may not be so totally aware of, you know, this sort of thing. Because I Fair don't. Notes. And at the same I time, they do have. I think there was have, a letter. I might be wrong on that. But at the same time, they do have the achievements tab, current events, that updates regularly. So, if Just people, it updates. 
I'm trying to find the achievements under. Uh, is it I side think, stories yeah, nowadays? A lot of them are hidden uh, though, to, to begin with. Anyway, side stories. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah, don't it fit. might be. It might actually be hidden boots. I don't. It might not show oh, really? it to you. I, I, I I'm not totally hidden, sure on that because but... I have done some of those side <laughs> stories. I have four tabs under side stories. Mm. Okay, so they're hidden until you find them. That's right. It said like Scorns is saying it only unlocks until you do the first event. So they're all hidden until uh, you do yeah, the first same, event. Yeah. I mean, so, I see the pros and cons to both sides. It's fun to discover and unlock this stuff, but there's probably going to be some people who miss it. The only yeah. good news that we've seen is that these don't seem to go away anymore. So so far. But so far. Yeah. So does that mean that Joko's always going to be a threat? I don't know. We will never. Know. We will never deal with Joko. I'm not well, sure. The, the, in, you the, know, in the context of the maps, I guess right, but it's because it, every map has a time bubble, right? Yeah. Every, yeah. The, every the current events are are current, kinda, but they're actually kind of kinda. never going away, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. I unless, mean, we, un, you know, unless ArenaNet makes a big announcement saying, "Hey, this stuff is going to go away. You should go complete it or something," but we've not seen that happen yet. Mm. But imagine yeah. in like two years, no one's right. gonna read those old bats notes and find out about that content. Yeah, like that's true. That's true. It's kind of a shame, really. Uh, but I think that's it's kind of how it's supposed to be, I guess, to a certain extent. I mean, may, may, ha, may, maybe maybe they could add NPCs. They could add like historian NPCs. They could tell you what to do. Maybe. Yeah, you know how they have with, with season one, like little hints. Yeah, so in in the future, that there, there could be like um in Lion's Arch. There could be a big NPC on the map, and it's a, and it could be, um, look, this guy will tell you about all these current events, and you can go and experience them yourself, right? Maybe they do. Maybe because the scouts were supposed to be, yeah, kind, kind of like that, except like a, a giant scout, like a huge scout, yeah, uh, like a that, char uh, scout. across across the entire map, the, like, uh, the entire world, right? A huge, a big scout, boys, <laughs> um, and the, I, big and then boy Arena, scout. Arena Net could make him very obvious, I guess, by having a big icon, big icon, right? Yeah, in on Lions the, Arch, on Lions Arch. This one and guy. then I think what they could do is have, is have loading screen messages, right? That you know how they have with they had with Twitch. Yeah, they they yeah. have that system. Like, why not have that system? So have that system say, oh, you know, aha, you know, if you uh, uh, to to keep up with the to keep up with the past, why not go and talk to this guy in Lions Arch and he'll he'll talk to, have, or, have have stuff that people are very obvious. Have it on the launcher, you know. Have it on the launcher. Have it in loading screens. Uh, have it have, at the top of the screen or something, right? Like, they have this, this for the loading so screens. Like instead of putting in that new that that scout, let's say. They could use the loading screens in that way. Like, say, you, you at the bottom, you have the note patch note that we just got in the current events when you load into these maps. It's like, Awakened are attacking certain areas. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think the loading screens should have all kinds of tips, like, for example, the all materials deposit button and all, all yeah. you know, all, all kinds of stuff that is yeah, useless for, you know, you useful should, for a new player. You should have, yeah. like, um, you know, Deposit all materials and follow MMO Inks on Twitter. Yeah, all these kind, are all, all kinds these of are stuff basic like stuff. That. This is basic stuff, right? Basic yeah. stuff that you want to see, you want to have. So, just talking about the story involved in the current events going on now. Uh, so, previously, the current events have been loosely tied to this. I mean, obviously, effects of the story, like the there was. The energy going wild, so all the dragons and everybody were trying to suck up all the magic. Uh, recently, we got a current event, but there, it wasn't directly tied, I guess, to the living world. Maybe it was in a certain way. It was kind of, I guess. But then, then there was the current events that happened last month, which was because of the new raid that was coming out. Mm. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, this current event seems to be directly tied oh, yeah. to... The story the living world it's, it's like, very it, directly tied it's a direct consequence of what happened in the story of what we learned uh, in the story mm -hmm. it's it, almost a continuation but n not exactly right it, not exactly but it is kind of a continuation to a certain extent right it is exactly what was happening we found out what was happening was during the well, story and this, this, this is sura that you go to to make this device there's a lot of dialogue there about joko and how is he using these portals and how do the portals exactly work and 
you know, why is it unstable for us? But it doesn't seem to be unstable for him. And there's a lot of conjecture there as well. So there is more lore and story to get out of these things by at least talking to this Asura. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder, though, because when I first read that patch note before I realized it was awakened and directly tied to the story, I thought undead current events again. Is this going to be the new raid wing coming out whenever? Uh, and I guess it's not, unless if they do a new raid, raid wing, do you think they would have it tied to the Awakened? Honestly, after after Hall of Chains, I, I think it's very difficult to predict where the raid story is going to go. Honestly, yeah, because it was kind of a one off that. Yeah, yeah, I I, th I think raid I think story and raids is something that everyone should be really excited about actually because I, th I I really think they can I think they've been let they've they've been set free man they can do whatever they're, they're going crazy. You know, I, I did not expect them to even go to the underworld, really. Well, it, I, I kind of thought like it was a possibility, but to do Doom, you know, Doom and Raids is kind of crazy, right? It's like, wow, it's great. that's actually a huge piece of lore. It's a huge piece of the story that's not really relevant to the main story, but it's still a really exciting thing. That's a, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's almost like it, almost as, as important as like Wing 4, arguably, like with, with Soul. Like uh, Doom is, a, is, is, is important, right? He was a you know, big end boss from Guild Wars 1. Now he's back. And Guild Wars 2. So honestly, I think they can do anything they want in, in raids right now. They they can go crazy, dude. They're going to go crazy. That's cool. So, man. yeah. So do you think, bro, like, are they going to go crazy again and do maybe the Wizard's Tower next? I mean, I do think that's going to be a story eventually. I don't know about next, but I really hope that that's a story eventually. Something happening out there? The authorities. Oh, something. Something's burning down. Don't the authorities to are here. <laughs> the authorities to are going to get Inks. They're going to take Inks away, dude. He's got to be shut it. down. They need to take him out. He needs to get... God, a... my, you know, my microphone is so sensitive that it picks that up. It's not even close by. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. yeah. I don't know, man. It's exciting times, uh, but... The yeah, the, the current events do seem to be more of a flow, right? So it's kind of it seems like you, they want to make it so there's kind of an ebb and flow of content, right? So you have living story patch, then you just they take it down, but it's still there, right? It's still present, so maybe it keeps people mm -hmm. into the game. So I think that what they're trying to do is maybe maybe more what you would have expected, you know? So it, it's like the, the current events are there to keep you interested instead of just being a side meme. So it's gonna be it's like it's the main meme for a bit, and they bring it back up with another episode. It seems like they're trying to recapture a little bit of what they intended for the game with the first Living World season. Yeah, like constantly changing. Where dynamic? Where yeah. the Living World did crazy things on the maps and made yeah. the map like everything in the maps change, dynamic, etc. Living World season two, like uh, they they kind of lost a little bit of it because they didn't really have stuff in the maps at the same time as they had the instant content. Except no, they they did. Was living was it Living World season two where they had like uh, certain um, certain forts got completely taken over by thorns? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I guess well anyway in that in this case it looks like the current events are kind of like that version of what we have right now for Living World. Uh, the events in maps that are tied to the Living World storylines that are instance or in a new map entirely. Are they eventually going to run out of different maps if they keep adding current events to different maps? So eventually, they, if they add current events to a certain map, they will already have another current event on that map that's on a different timeline. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah, I, I suppose that's why they have to move them into maps that they're introducing. So they have to continuously use old kind of re the cycle of maps. So the map is relevant in the main story, and then it ends up as a current event somewhere down the line, right? So like maybe we'll end up revisiting some of the old maps, right? Uh, the, so think, even the even like the season three maps, maybe we will end up revisiting some of those old maps. We could, we could. Uh, but I do feel like they like. Even though we said that current events seem to last forever, I feel like they could easily be shut off. I think the reason yeah. why certain current events, like the the energy ones, aren't shut off is because that's still a present threat in Tyria. That energy is going wild everywhere, so that's why it's still there. Um, but I should really finish those. <laughs> <laughs> but like for the Awakened, for example, if in the Living World we defeat Joko or whatever, I'm sure they'll turn off the portals. Yeah. The end. 
I, I think, yeah. it, I mean, they're going to have to eventually, otherwise it's going to get very confusing, right? <laughs> it's gonna, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if stuff starts overlapping, it's going to get, it's going to get very weird. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, yeah, I'm sure they don't want it to get weird. Maybe, but that might be why they do keep the achievements hidden so that people who haven't experienced it don't look at their achievement panels a year later and say, oh, crap, I guess I will never, ever get these. And mm -hmm. they're always going to appear on my yeah. achievement panel. I think something, that... something that's unobtainable is something that they're probably looking to avoid. Right. Yeah. Uh, Maybe they, they maybe they kind of create something, maybe some some kind of phasing system. So maybe you can actually you can send yourself back in time. Maybe they could implement something like maybe. that. Maybe so you could always go, but maybe. even if they even if they disabled it on by default, there's some way you could kind of turn it back on, like go back to another shard of the map. It gets less weird. I mean, yeah, I, I think that they could wrap some of these things up. They just have to let us know ahead of time. Like, don't just randomly <laughs> do it. That was that was sort of you know, part of the problem. They could wrap some of these things up, but give people fair enough warning notice so they can go out and actually complete these things. Yeah, like if in the last Living World story this this season, we do defeat Joko, they'll say uh, his portals are still active for another month or something. His forces are subsiding. Make sure you get out there and take care and, of them. And something. drive them off for the, for yeah, the sure, last bit. Sure, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, too, the other thing is... Um, and a lot of people were bringing this up to me when I was streaming, was that we they never finished the unstable portal storyline that we had going that started. Mm. The Rift Stabilizer. So, like, that started, and there was clearly going to be a second part, and then, I don't know, then nothing happened. Mm. We haven't seen a second part to that. Yeah. And now oh. we're getting to this Joko Plague storyline. Looks like we're never going back and never finishing it. I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. How did it end exactly? Or not end as it is? You the, couldn't. Uh, uh, you couldn't actually complete it. Like there was a phase two of the stabilizers that didn't actually do anything. Feels bad, man. Mm. Hmm. I guess. Yeah. Oh, well. How about uh, that? All right. Yeah. yeah there well, you go. Kind of going back to rewards. This is kind of supposed to go on to rewards. Isn't it? <laughs> There's some interesting kind of drama -y memes uh, about right now, which is kind of um, with regards to exclusivity. How much does Renet care about exclusive in game rewards? Because. The reason I say there's a bit of drama about this is because it's kind of apparent that maybe Arena don't really care that much. And this is because of God of PvP and Voice in the Void. Arguably some of the only rewards that are exclusive through the game, right? Like stuff like raid titles and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and some of the stuff in raids as well, right? Like some of the stuff in raids and, and PvP, like you have to win ATs to get some of the skins, I guess. You have to win some stuff to do stuff. But... Some people were naughty boys. Some people were very naughty boys, and they exploited Doom CM, and they bought God of PvP or win traded their way to victory. And ArenaNet is going to do nothing about it, and they have more or less said this. Oh. Uh, and in fact, in quite, I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to talk smack, but in like a borderline. Mm, I, I know, like, the response from ArenaNet was not good regarding the Voice of the Void, in my opinion, and it pissed a lot of people off, I think. I think some people are a little bit upset, because they basically, someone said in a Reddit thread, you know, are you going to do anything about Doom CM exploit? This is basically what it was. And then someone's, and then a dev responded and said something along the lines of, we're the title with pride, not a lot of people actually did it. All right. Uh, and that basically, and, and, and that basically means, yeah, okay, we ain't going to do shit. You know, like, we're not, we're not going to do anything. And there's no comment on the win trading, right? There's no comment on the win trading. Like, come on, oh, sorry, man. Sorry, what happened? What, what was this exploit? Don't tell me the exact exploit. Uh, it's fixed now. It's fixed. fixed. You, you, could, you could actually damage Doom before the fight started and start the fight with him on 1% HP. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's you fixed. could do enough, wait, it's you fixed. could do enough damage before he even, before the fight even started to get him to 1%? Uh, no, you you could attack him on the throne when he was just standing there. Oh, oh so so hold on. And the people who exploited it and have the title because of that, they're not getting it. And the person nope. who responded said, 
said what? He said he said he wear said, the title with pride yeah. even if you exploited it. No, wear the title with no. pride. It's no not nearly as many people have exploited it as you think. He said low double digits. By the way, at the time, in fairness, less than a hundred people in the entire game had done it when he said that. But never mind. Uh, and yeah, he, he ba in my opinion that is that to me that says exploit in PV, exploit our challenge modes, and we won't do anything to stop you, right? And, and that's kind of like, oh, okay. So I guess Arena doesn't really care about exclusive rewards, right? Even if it's a fucking title, they don't care if you exploited it. You can just, ah, well, I guess you can keep it, right? It's like, mm. Feels bad. Uh, yeah, it is kind as of feels bad. As long as it doesn't affect the gem store and the economy of... Yeah, right. right. Uh, and Basically. It, 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 to a certain extent, uh, you know, it's PvE, it doesn't really matter. But when it comes to like, the win trade shit, like, that needs to be... Come on. Come on, sure. come on, Arena. Like, God of PvP should not be something you buy with Ectos, okay? Seriously. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not, it's not something you should buy. It's, you have to do it. You've got to grind out the games. It's not something you should win trade for. It, it's ridiculous. Like, we need, well, I, I just want a statement on it. I, at this point, I just want a statement. I want a yes or no. Arena, are we going to ban the fucking win traders? And the answer is probably no. No. Uh, the answer is probably no. But the thing is... That is silly! Come on, man! Like, I, I thought they wanted their game mode to be competitive. Like, PvP is memeing itself into oblivion at this point, right? It's actually memeing itself into oblivion. And I'm I, guessing I don't this think was on gonna... NA? No, EU as well! Oh, really? Both, yeah, both! Uh, well, you know what happens is it start. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it has always been... I mean, this has been going on for a very long time. This is not really a new development necessarily, but it's becoming more and more public as time goes along. And it's becoming more and more apparent because people are more brazen about the fact that they're doing it because nothing ever happens to them. Yeah. Or when something does happen, they just create a new account and they do it again anyway. So it does, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a shame. It really is. Does uh, mm. win trading involve any exploits, or is it just queuing it, up? It, it's just at the same time. It's just ectos, man. Ectos and throwing, throwing games. Is it? So but it is. throwing. Throwing is uh, against the TOS, though. Yeah, it is bannable. Like that, that something is bannable. Yeah, but they just don't. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and mm. uh, fine, like l listen, I, mean, I get it's hard, right? Like it's probably a massive pain in the ass, a pain in the dick to track it down, right? But still, like this has to be dealt with. Like at least, a, at least some kind of statement on it. Uh, and the voice in the void thing is is kind of sad, right? Because now. Uh, I don't know who to trust, really. I mean, I'm actually willing. To, okay, so if they say low double figures, let's say let's say thirty people exploited it. Let's say thirty people exploited the title, something like that. At the time that we got that response um, from a dev, eighty people had done it legitimately in the entire game. So that means that about twenty five percent, yeah, twenty five percent of the people who had done it had exploited it. I don't know. I mean, you would think my my logic personally for me, I would think if less people had exploited it, that would make it easier to figure out and then ban you're not banning a whole bunch of people. Wait, the more pretty... people the more people that take advantage of something, the less likely they are to then go around banning people, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just I don't know, man. It's, it's like when it's when um when people started doing um, Tarir, you know, multi mm, multi yeah. loot, right? People yeah. were like exploit, exploit. They were they were crying for bans and fixes and everything, and that went on for a very long time. So many people were doing it. You knew that bans were never going to happen from something like that. Mm. I don't know. What What's your opinion on someone buying a Voice in the Void or someone buying, like, just from nine people running it and one person hanging on. Or someone buying a uh, god of PvP by being one of five people. In PvE, in PvE I think, ah, uh, fuck it, it's fine. Um, but in PvP, no, because that it's a, it, it, you can't... Because you, for a start, account sharing is against TOS, right? If you're going to buy god of PvP, you'd obviously have someone play on your account. Uh, but I think, that, I think the disparity between certain players in PvP and regular players in PvP... Uh, is so large that you could probably buy God of PvP. How do you mean? How, how could you possibly buy? Join, join a team of good players. You can't duo. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Y yeah. No. Mm. You can't duo. 
yeah, at that level, you can't. But no, no, you know, you, you cannot, no, you should not be. I, I can, yeah, buying raid titles, sure, fine. And it's kind of easy to explain this because um, buying a raid title does not affect anyone else's gameplay. However, if you're win trading, you are actively fucking over four players whenever you do that, right? So if, if you and your buddy in, in the, you know, the Guild Wars 2 Mafia, who actually, unfortunately, share my fucking guild tag, Salt, as well, bastards, um, they will, you know, the, the way it works is, like, one person on the other team will throw. Like, if you're in the team with the other boy, you throw. And, that, and, and that's not okay, because you are fucking four people in the ass, and not in a good way, either, right? <laughs> but in, in, in PvE, right, like, it's fuck it, like, come on, like, whatever. Like, you're not screwing anyone over, right? Uh, by yeah, buying a yeah. retail. However, if you no, win trading, true, you're right. you are win trading someone. is terrible. Yeah. Win trading is pretty bad. Uh, and, but exploiting is an entirely different thing, right? Like if, you, if you exploit a title, that's that's a completely different thing. If, if hey, hey, if you can find a guild who can nine-man doom CM, all fucking power to you, you know? That, 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 at the end of the day, that's a legit kill. That kill's legit, you know? That could have happened. Yeah. I mean, think, think about the situation. I mean, suppose that a guild was doing a doom CM run. And one guy dies at seventy percent in, which is very easy. Like, it, it, and then they finish it. That's basically the same, really. Because at the end of the day, um, at, at the end of the day, like seventy percent is kind of easy. Like, it, it's only after sixty percent that the, the game turns it, the, the fight turns into a clown fiesta anyway. So if it, it, it yeah, it's kind of the same thing. It's the same as having someone dead. Like nine manning is fine, um, but it's the exploits that are concerned. Because right now, I'm kind of concerned about the next wing, right? Because now, to me, all the exploits are going to go. Oh, I guess ArenaNet won't ban us then. So this is going to completely just make it so that people are just going to exploit. Uh, so instead of having a, a race, right, to get to Worlds First, First Doom CM, blah, 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 blah. The Worlds First is going to be junk because it's just going to be an exploit. Uh, because yeah. there's no fear of getting banned anymore. I, I think in PvP as well. I, I mean, I've heard um, from my PvP comrades that there's just blatant hackers. I've seen streams, blatant hackers in uh, PvP. Mm. Teleporting around, going crazy. And th this is not good. This is not okay. And, and we all know about World vs. World hackers. World vs. World hackers never fucking get banned. You know, like, that just doesn't happen. Uh, yeah. This this is yeah. actually a serious problem, man. This is ser this is actually a big problem. By the way, for the for the buying God of PvP, I was being stupid because I was thinking of God of PvP as winning the monthly tournament, but no. Oh. <laughs> well, buying yeah. that, I'll tell you what, if, um, and actually I think that would be kind of legit, if you can find four people who can carry your ass to winning the monthly tournament, then fair play, you can buy, you can buy the, um, best of the best title, right? Fair play. Yeah. You know, if, if you can find four people so good that they can beat the other team more or less four, man, with you just kind of, like, dicking around, like, feeding. Yeah, you know? that's what I was thinking then, of when I was talking about that. Well, yeah, no, that, I think that would be fine. Like, if you could actually find people good enough to do that... Yeah, sure, you can buy that. Because at the end, that doesn't... Without the other team throwing, right? I'm not talking about, like, you know, rigging the tournament so the other guys throw. I'm talking about you can... Um, you have to have four people good enough to basically 4v5. Is, is Yeah, then sure, you can buy it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, nah, no throwing. <laughs> Do you think ArenaNet is afraid to ban or, or just that dumb? I actually think um, it's a bit of apathy to a certain extent. I, I In the response, I sense a lot of apathy. It's kind of like... Why do you, it, the, 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 the vibe I got was like, why do you even care that people exploited the hardest title in the game? You know, that, that was what I got from it, really. Um, like, hey, you did it legit, Shame. right? You did it legit, right? Like, who cares? So you should be proud. Yeah, yeah you should be you proud. Did you did it. So you should be proud. You did it Not legit. Not people have it. Yeah, so. Uh, and that, it, it, does so. Send, it does send a really terrible message, in my opinion. Um, I had the same opinion when the NA guys sold the the monthly AT, the first one, or whatever it was, yeah. right? I, I had the same thing. It's, it sends a terrible message. Win trading, allowing win traders to continue on, especially for as long as it's been going on, it's a terrible message, mm. especially in competitive format, but in any format to allow the exploits to carry on when, when you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't like the message that it sends, but... it's a, it's It's kind of... Uh, ironic might not be the right word for it, but it, it does feel a little bit ironic that that this is specifically for the Doom CM when uh, historically they would use Doom as the ban hammer. Yeah, uh, Wars uh, one. exactly. Yeah, they need to fucking ban people, dude. Doom comes yeah. back to take his title. Give that back to me. 
exactly that would be kind of funny that would be kind of funny i mean we we were discussing like how you could meme these people like force them to wear a dunce hat or something you know they do and i think do they do that in was that in h1z1 or something i can't remember no it was in gta wasn't it gta like they force you to wear a dunce hat if you're a cheater it's, it's a game it, it's it's a similar game to that i can't remember exactly but right, right. it's it just oh, i don't know man it feels feels bad, man. Yeah, feels but bad, you know man. what? If there was some kind of weird dunce hat, then people would go out of their way. To exactly, I know. <laughs> anything, anything you would give them, anything you would do, they would just go for it because it's kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny to, to go oh, that for ex- it. That dunce hat's exclusive. I need that content. <laughs> but I get that. Um, by the way, when the all the fly and speed hacks, all that kind of stuff that's mm-hmm. happening sometimes in different game modes uh, in Guild Force 2, and Arunet doesn't seem to have any a tracking system for that on the servers like some other MMOs might have. So I was wondering, are there how many people are there that we don't know of that go in the raid and somehow speed hack, fly hack, and solo raids? Like, do we even have any clue if there are people like that that could possibly do something like that? I uh, yeah, saw the, a video. The, there's a guy called. Um, well, I, I actually talked to this guy just yesterday, and apparently, it's not. It's his channel isn't exactly just him. But there's a guy called Erwin Arselko, uh, and a bunch of other people like that. And they just, they just, because they're bored of the game, they just hack. Uh, for example, there's a video of them floating above Sabatha, auto attacking it to death. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they do all kinds of crazy, like all kinds of crazy stuff, like you know, like doing dungeon records because he has like speed hack and fly hack and shit. Uh, and oh, he also has like invulnerable hack as well. Really weird. I don't even know how that's possible. Um, but yeah, th- there's all kinds of like weird shit you can do in this game. Uh, and, and I've just, been against yeah. a couple of invulnerable hackers in World vs. World for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't record your gameplay and you play solo, there's no way to get yeah. caught. Yeah. And then, mm. I mean, he, he's the public one, right? There's plenty of other people who do it, right? There's plenty of other people who do it. Uh, so yeah, there are the, there are these exploits that are so powerful that you could basically just solo anything uh, if you wanted to. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I get that those are hard to fix, right? Like those are not easy fixes. You still have hacks in pretty much every game, right? You have hacks in every game, uh, but it, the the key yeah. is is you know what do you do with them? Uh, and right now it is kind of scary that Arena is kind of saying, "Go ahead," to a certain extent, right? Like the, the, these people aren't getting fucking wrecked. And that is, that's actually an unfair statement. Like, they have people like Chris Cleary, who, oh, dude, he's, he's itching for that Banhammer, man. Oh, he loves it. He fucking loves it. He's where, he's ready for it. Uh, but it just seems like something, uh, it's not It's not quite right, is it? I don't know. It just doesn't seem quite right. But, like, may, maybe no ban the people who exploited Doom in that case, but can't you just remove their titles? Is that not something that's possible? We had that discussion last week, and... You know, people were telling me that yes, they can remove titles. So I don't know. Apparently I remember they can. there was a time I where I don't know people why they got titles. But... Yeah, but I remember there's a time. I don't know. It was a year ago or something like that where people got titles they weren't supposed to the either Monuments, through yeah. the Hall of Monuments, Monuments exactly. But right. that that took a while to correct, didn't it? That took a while <clears> for them <throat> to be able to remove the titles of the people who didn't wasn't supposed to have it. Uh, and that makes me think that they can remove titles, but it's a lot of work. Mm. So maybe that might cue into the reason why they're letting it slide. Well, well, why didn't they but do those the ban- titles? Oh, those sorry, titles yeah. were also connected to the other game, the original Guild Force. So yeah. maybe there's yeah, just yeah, that might be why it was so much work. It, but even if yeah. that's the case, why didn't they just make? Why didn't they just make a new title? Like last time. Well, right, they haven't done that either. They haven't made a new title like they did for the last one, right? Right, yeah. where they could just do it again. Yeah, just duplicate the title and rename it. I mean... I guess, yeah. I that's know. that's the least they could do. Or, 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 uh, no, they can't reset the title, right? Because that would be kind of... Ooh. But the, the way... The, the, yeah, the, the kind of ghetto solution would be to just, yeah, go and make a new title. Then. Ajax is saying that... The whole four hundred dollar NAAT didn't get partnership removed. Yeah, people. Is that true. People, I, I don't know, Inks. Why don't you look at the Discord and see if you recognize any names? I did. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a kind of a big meme, dude. They said wear it with pride because they're going to remove voice in the void from the exploiters. 
Uh, that's, I, I mean, that would be a very charitable interpretation. I want to be charitable to Arena now. I, I, I don't know. But sometimes they just do weird things. Um, yeah, exactly. Hey, here's the thing, um, um, the underside. It's actually very easy to tell um, which kill has been exploited on Doom. Because it will take a few seconds, right? It will take a few seconds to kill him. Whereas a legit Doom CM kill takes about 10 minutes. Maybe a little bit under 10 minutes. Mm. Uh, and so, I mean, it, uh, uh, like anything under three minutes is probably uh 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 uh. That, that's a little bit naughty, you know. Like, ooh, May, ooh. It's possible they're worried that some of the people who exploited it first have done it since then the proper way, and they don't want to remove the title from people who have done it the proper way. But I say just remove it anyway. Do it. They'll have to do it again if they want to. If they want to do it, if they want to get the title, because once once they see the people who exploited it for sure in certain runs. Uh, they could remove those people's titles and force them to do it again if they want to get the title back, even if they have done it since. Yeah, uh, I, I actually can't see or can't tell Ajax's linked me a picture, but someone brought up a good point. They cut ties with Brazil because of the video he made, oh. but they didn't cut ties with these guys who literally sold and broke terms of service? What? Feels bad, man. Brazil died for our sins! Okay. Are you kidding me? Feels bad, man. I, I get, yeah, Cryo's right. I guess they could kind of get around it like that by just kind of jiggling around. But then again, you might as well do the fight if you're going to do that, right? I mean, come on, man. You're saying, okay, they exploit to 13% then run around doing mechanics for seven minutes. Like, come on, why would you even do that shit? Just, what? <laughs> just do the fight at that point. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, this this is this is a, this is a kind of a, a silly meme. But like, let's let's go back to let's go back to the real topic, boys. Exclusive rewards for game modes. This is kind of the central issue. Kind of, it's taken us an hour and fifty-two minutes to get here, but this is kind of a big part of this <coughs> issue. Like Guild Wars Two, is uh, is kind of just turning into like you 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 just farm gold and you get what you want. Like it that that is obviously a convenience. Now don't get me wrong, that's some serious convenience right there. You know that's convenient. However, however, do we want to actually have to play specific parts of the game to get specific rewards sometimes. Like, we kind of have that in raids. To a certain extent, you have it in World vs. World and PvP. But do we need more of that stuff? Do we need to have more of that sort of thing in the game so you're actually actively promoted to go and do specific things? Like, you have... So, I mean, to a certain extent, they are trying to implement that with the, the fractal stuff, like the fractal progression, and making it worth to do each specific game mode. But it seems like the rewards are very universal. You know, it's very universal. And that's convenient. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying this is a right or wrong issue, really. It's just a... It's almost like a preference issue to a certain extent, right? It, it's, um... Uh... It, it's just a different approach. I'm wondering if this is if this is the right approach uh, for the game to make the game engaging and exciting, you know? Uh, but yeah, I, um, I, I, go ahead, Sampa, go yeah, for it. Yeah, they have started now introducing the legendary trinkets, like the outer and is it the other one ring? Mm. Uh, but it's not, you can't get the entire, the final version, the legendary ring yet. But they have started adding those in PvE. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get those in World vs. World, like, Maybe without the skins, but like legendary trinkets, like accessories, am amulets, rings from World vs. World or PvP. Like you can stack the back piece, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Well, like, I, are they gonna? Like, I was wondering, like, when are they able to add rings, accessories, and amulets to World vs. World as legendaries or to PvP? Uh, because they don't have those, all of those slots filled. In, on P in PvE mode, so mm. it mm. feels like everything is going first to PvE. So if mm. they would now, for example, add legendary drink, uh, accessories to World vs. World, then then people who play, who just play PvE, they couldn't get the second accessory because you can't craft two auroras for a, yeah. for your. So you would have to play World vs. World in order to get like the best in slot. Here, if you consider legendary to be like best in yeah. spots, <laughs> I don't think that's un I don't think yeah. that's unreasonable though. I don't think it's unreasonable. Um, I think it's fine as long as you. Well, I think it's fine as long as you don't have to be good at those game modes, right? And and I think that that works, right? Just make make it so you have to play a bunch in the same way they do it with the PvP back piece, right? You don't have to be good at all, uh, PvP right. to get the back piece. I think then that's fine. I don't. I I know. And seriously, PvE players and and also to every player actually, world versus world, PvP and PvE, it is not unreasonable 
okay? For you to have to play another game mode than your favorite one to get a specific reward, <laughs> okay? And I can understand a little bit of salt from the world versus what especially, because, like, they get fuck all. But especially to, like, the PvE casuals. Come on, guys. Like, it's not unreasonable to go and have to play a little bit of world versus world, a little bit of PvP to get your legendary back piece or whatever, right? Come on, guys. Let's just, just, just fucking get over it. Just go, go get in there. Fuck it. Like, if you're going to play world, just AFK. Just AFK and pit farm. I, I'm like, I don't know, like, watch a movie or something. You know? It comes the I feel flame. like the I feel like the game needs uh, like uh, completely new types of rewards. Like like for, for example, like Griffon was the perfect example of a reward that everyone just wanted to have. We would maybe if we could have uh, well, Mount skins is a bad example because well, it's just different skins and that's good for gem store making microtransactions and that's, that kind of stuff. But if we had like some kind of other system like you could have like boats or something like other toys or something that you could get from different game modes. That mm. Mm. like that that would be something that interests me more yeah. than just armor yeah. and stats and just. Yeah. I definitely agree. Like fu fun little things, like fu you know, fun things, not not necessarily just um, like very conventional rewards. Yeah, you you can have some non-conventional ones. I think that's even better. See, but then that to an extent, the right? The problem with that though, the problem with that though is. You're starting to talk about stuff that, uh, when we talk about the gem store and what they could put in the gem store, that's the kind of stuff that would be interesting to put in the gem store as well. So like, yeah. it, it's it's a tough it's a tough sell to ArenaNet to say put in these cool fun items into uh, PVE World vs World PVP content as exclusive items, if you're guaranteed to make lots of money off of them in the gem store. Yeah, but you know they they added the um, the chair in raid mm. first yes yes so, that's a good that's a great exclusive yeah. item but you can buy that off the trading post can't you yeah you can for about 5k <laughs> yeah for a lot of money yeah. it'll go but down there there. Go. That's... it will very soon it's going to go down um you know uh because soon soon people will actually have enough gating crystals to buy it and that's when it's going to plummet and then a whole bunch of them are going to enter because right now the only way you can get it is rng drop uh, because there's no one has 2,000 crystals yet. However, in a few weeks, people will have 2,000 crystals, and then they then they'll then the market will be flooded with quite a few of them. Man, I'm really behind. Yeah. <coughs> you need to come raid with us, Inks. MMO Inks. Salt big boys. We kill raids. We can kill it all. Easy. What, Best raid uh, what, in the game, boys. What would you use if you raided with them, Inks? Probably play Salt Beast, right? Soul Beast. Soul Beast, yeah. Soul Beast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good DPS. Yeah, big DPS, dude. Soul Beast is good. Big DPS. Big DPS, man. It's good stuff. But yeah, right. anyway, I don't know. Exclusive rewards, man. That's what we need. Exclusive rewards that you can't buy for gold. I, th I, th I think the whole... The gold thing is very convenient. Okay? It is. I get it. It's convenient. However... However... It is time. It is time for us to maybe get to make more exclusive. And I, I do like the way they're going uh, with, with that. You know, it, it, we are going in that direction, especially with how raids work, right? There are exclusive raid skins, you know, exclusive raid skins um, uh, and stuff like that. And it, ex hopefully they will try and make exclusive, more exclusive World vs. World rewards, more exclusive PvP rewards as well that you can't just get. I want people to want to play the game. Stuff like Fractal God, like Fractal bonuses, like little Fractal gimmicks, stuff like that. That's great. I mean, Fractal Gold may be a little bit of a grind, but stuff like that is what I like in games. Long-term horizontal... Well, not exactly horizontal progression but in terms of Fractals, but, you know, progression. Long-term progression that people can work yeah, on. It, actively it was, play the game. Yeah. It was good at this and the, the World vs. World chest piece that you get when you are at 2k yeah. rank. You get the tentacle yeah. thing. I'm uh, actually going for it at yeah. the moment. I mean, in my opinion, World vs. World, I think they actually made the grind too hard. Um, I don't think two. I think two K rank is. Eh, it, it's kind of like people wanted it to be a bit retroactive. But if you're a new player going into the game, like two K is fucking hell. Uh, I, I guess it is. I guess it is. It does make it exclusive, I suppose. But it is a bit AIDS as well. I don't know. I mean, two K rank isn't that bad. I. Keep, I mean, I've. I'm at nearly three K rank, and I've been playing from about eight months, and I started at about five hundred rank. So it's not that bad. It's like a year of play. Like a well, I played a lot, so maybe it's like a year or two. But still, I, I know personally, I think they should have made it a little bit easier, a little bit easier, or at least make the grind a bit faster. Uh, give something to increase it. Boosters. 
Boosters. Boosters. Boosters. I mean, I don't know. At the end there, you can kind of quibble over the numbers. At the end of the day, the core idea is there, right? Um, but, yeah. Stuff like that is going to be really good. They're working on it for PvP with the Obsidian stuff. Good, 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 good. And you have World Blast World. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And and you have, like, in raids, you have the Dooms. The Doom skins are really nice, actually. Shame there isn't a full set, but hey. That's how it goes, right? That's how it fucking goes, boys. I actually... Yeah, Doom I doesn't looking, use every weapon. I was looking at it the other day, like, the, his armor pieces and... Yeah. Top, it's, top notch. Yeah. The hat, dude. It's like a cool hat. It's really good. Yeah, top yeah, notch. Yeah, it is top notch, man. It is top notch. We need some goals. Yeah, we do need some goals. And that's... And I... It, it's kind of like... People complained about this. They complained about grind and having to play the game. And look what they did with the renet with Path of Fire. Don't have to play the game anymore. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It, it's, oh, be, be careful what you wish for, my friends. You might just get it. Um, yeah. Although yeah. that is an exaggeration. There's plenty to do in Path of Fire, but it, it, you know, there's plenty to do. Let's be honest. There's so many achievements to get. They're all one AP though. It feels bad, man. But you know, there's plenty of stuff to do in the world. Um, but yeah, I think I think we need some exclusive rewards, boys. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. And they are doing it with Obsidian weapons, as just got mentioned in chat again. But it, I think it Those is a direction I'd like to a... see. Yeah, maybe a bit of a, oh, yeah. maybe a, bit of a rework. They're not exactly the prettiest yeah. things, are they? Uh, McDonald's. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> a I've lot seen... of people seem to really not like the look of them. So I, I've seen better, you know? Maybe a rework there. Not much obsidian on them. A lot of flashy stuff. Yeah. World first World Siege skins. So you can have different skins for your seat. Something like that would That's be really cool idea. though. It's a great idea. Or I, I think I mentioned this ages ago, like something to you can, something you can earn that you can make, you can kind of decorate keeps that you claim on your guild, right? You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah, 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 it'll be kind of cool, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, you, if you Actually, if you claim a keep, you can have, I don't know, like a, I don't know, like a tree in it or something. I don't fucking know. Like, or, uh, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, what, what else do you want? Yeah, you can have loads of stuff. Probably enable new exploits in, in the game. Uh, just like, make it non-collidable. Uh, yeah. Just make it non-collidable. You see, you can't interact with it. Oh, that yeah. Works, yeah. Or put it on the roof or something. Like, there's a giant tree on the roof. Oh, but then, then you're going to have then you're gonna have players mesmers hiding in the trees. I wonder for... Here's a good question. For those who play World vs. World more consistently... Uh, or pretty consistently, when Winter's Day comes around, you guys get your sieges converted, right? Like you get the you get the candy cane ballista. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, you know what I mean? So like you know, uh, Sampo was talking about skins and stuff for that. Would I mean I think that's cool, but would World vs World players like that? Would that be a cool unlock for them? I think that was actually mentioned on our Teamspeak channel where we World vs World, like our desolation EU. Mm -hmm. It's they were talking about that. That there's that's where I got my idea from. So I think there so at least someone is interested in it. Mm. I think it's a, I think it's a cool idea, actually. But, yeah. but anyway, I don't know, does anyone have rewards. any anyone have any kind of remarks on exclusive rewards? Uh, there. I mean, there <laughs> exist kind of exclusive rewards right now. Um, sort of. Like you were saying, the legendary trinkets and stuff, and not, not nothing exclusive except for those titles you were talking about are hard to get. Really, when you think about no. it, um, do you think the exclusive rewards have to be something that's hard to get in their certain in your particular game type, or something that's just you work towards? It takes a while to work towards. The thing is, I actually think that the reason we're kind of drawing a blank here is because we're all dodging that topic right now, and I think at the end of the day, yes. It has to Dude. actually end up something that's difficult to get. I think that is the okay. only way you get prestige, and that's why Voice of the Voice in the Void, in my opinion, is a prestigious title. God right. of PvP should be a prestigious title. Best of the best should be a prestigious. There's nothing for World vs. World, but World vs. World is very tricky to actually do that. Like, so, uh, what, uh, what uh, if they add like special set of achievements for World vs. World where you need to keep um, cap like for uh, five towers in like 30 Less. minutes <laughs> yeah like something uh, special achievements and we'll just trade it like, though yeah kind of we'll gimmicky uh, oh, kind of yeah. funny ones yeah kill 500 players in five minutes yeah it's tough uh you just think is yeah you'll exploit that. it you'll <laughs> exploit it. that's the thing like, yeah it's very well versus what is a very difficult game mode to do this sort of thing in because of how you can exploit it 
Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, at the end of the day, true exclusivity and prestige does in does fall from difficulty, right? It's from it's hard to get, uh, and right now that is not something that's gonna, probably going to end up in the game because of the way the game is. Like the, you know, people imagine if there was something hard in the game. Just imagine that. Imagine how unhappy people would be. The, the, imagine the rage if there was actually something hard to get in the game. Suppose, suppose Voice in the Void was the only way to get the Doom Helmet, for example. Mm. That would I be- I think that's fun. good. Yeah, no, I do as well. I think that would be awesome, but- Because you could do Doom. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah but, well, no, but, but I mean, come on. Like, I, it's prestige, it's prestige. Yeah, dude. I know, that's exactly it. That's the conversation we're having. So I think you're right. I think that difficult things to do should be the way to get exclusive items, but that's probably why there aren't as many exclusive items in the game as there should be. Because you know, I said this, of... Uh, I said this back when we had the first three wings that they released the Soul River Glider into the gem store. And I always thought that that should have been a reward for completing every achievement in the first three raid wings. You, could, you, you see this all the time in other MMOs. Usually they give you a, a special mount skin. Yeah. Um, and I can remember getting my, in World of Warcraft, in both R World of Warcraft and Rift, getting that special mount skin for completing, you know, a certain set of achievements from a raid wing. Now, eventually, yes, lots of people are, are going to get it over time. But, you know, you have, you, you know, you get to be that special prestigious snowflake for a while. And absolutely, I think, you know, doing Doom CM or maybe all of the achievements in that particular wing should give a noticeable piece of armor or glider or mount or, you know, something that is visible for everybody to see. I mean, that is one of the things that Syndroner was talking about in Arena Net later added for the monthly AT winners is that, is that symbol that, you know, that says, I won, look at me. Mm. And I think prestige like that is important in games. Don't get me wrong. There should be lots of cool rewards for specific game modes. But there should also be some prestigious items as yeah. well. I think the only thing that is actually you could classify as a true prestige item would in fact be that crown then, right? Maybe. Because everything else in raids you can just grind. You, in, you, you can just grind. Uh, but you, that don't, reminds you don't have me... to actually do any of the tough achievements or anything like that. It kind of reminds me of when they first introduced Ascended stuff, when it was just in Fractals for a while, and there was quite a lot of complaints about the fact that it was exclusive to Fractals and people wanted other ways of getting uh, getting uh, Ascended stuff, especially World versus World players. Uh, so I think it exclusive items is good, and... I would like to see more of them in the game, but you're sure to get some sort of backlash every time one is added. Yeah. yeah. Will it really matter? They'll just add something new to the gem store and all will be forgiven. Oh, Fair enough. Will be forgiven. Fair enough. Yeah. Know, it, it is a kind of thing that maybe the community's attitude would have to change. Uh, change. Sorry. Um, the community's attitude... I, I mean, it, I think we've already discussed this, but no matter what ArenaNet does, there is always going to be backlash from yeah. some group of people. So, so uh, yeah, but like, you can't be scared of that. Like, you can't... that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> since since no matter what you do, there's going to be. I mean, it's funny I say this. No matter what you do, there's going to be backlash from some group of people. So you can't be scared of that, and you have to just go with what you think is good. Uh, but like we were saying this maybe a couple of weeks before they introduced the mount. Uh, adoption licenses and I, I was saying after it came out that maybe they took that to heart a little bit too much that <laughs> they shouldn't care about the backlash of certain yeah. things they go, uh, <laughs> they go crazy <laughs> right? yeah but uh yeah anyway so that's that's the that's yeah. the community that's the two but, cents. Yeah. yeah there will always be baby rage mm -hmm. there always will be rage what this game really needs is a new title for the good apple achievement this prestigious title was massively devalued by the vicious exploiters who just spammed apples rather than properly walking them to the Nintendo NPC. such exploits truly take away from the hardcore open world experience <laughs> well he's not wrong well i mean yeah i mean uh, to a certain extent guys like in pve it's less relevant because it doesn't really affect other players but it is still relevant uh, although in open world, like, who cares if you exploit the fucking good Apple achievement? That's not something difficult, right? Doom CM is difficult. Yeah. Rock a nice fucking meme, buddy. 
The changing point where the mount skins overpriced like shit and all buy them. Wait, sure, ain't it? Thinks. Hmm. Wait, what the fuck, dude? This um, this message is pure nonsense, dude. We can do shit and still get money. That's why I refuse today to buy a single skin. Well, good on you, man. At the end of the day, Neon Green Monkey's got it right. Vote with your goddamn wallet, dude. If you don't like a business practice, then don't fund the business. Although, actually, I kind of think Arena's business model is kind of fine. Honestly, I never really got the outrage uh, at I all. I did. Uh... But... I did some I did some fractals with my friends the other day, and one of them appeared on a shiny new celestial griffin. Yeah, do you feel a bit mad? Like, you felt a, bit, a little bit of salt. Luck. Yeah, they <laughs> got. Yeah, I didn't. Uh... I was not mad at him. I was just like, I knew it was gonna happen, and and unfortunately, because when when like one of your friends arrives on it, uh, my other friend went ahead and bought like Ooh, ten tickets right yeah, away, all ball, all ball. right away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah, I was so yeah, yeah, tempted yeah. to as well, and I was like, I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. I feel like for a lot of that stuff, um, and myself included, I, I feel like a lot of that stuff is sort of like alligator tears, right? It, it's it's momentary anger or whatever, because, you know, all is forgiven the next time they release something decently priced that, that players, you know, are interested in. It's kind of like... Um, you know, if if I if my niece is being bad and I take the iPad away from her and she starts crying, the second I put the iPad back in her hands, tears stop. Ooh. They're alligator tears. They're fake tears. Yeah, man. Right. And I feel like you They're know, dropping the ice cream. Unfortunately, my my yeah, unfortunately myself included. Like, you get angry about this stuff, and the you know, if you're really truly angry, the goal is don't support it, don't buy it, don't spend money on it, stop giving the money, right? But then you just give the money anyway, because I, I feel like you and a, a few other people, like myself, in some cases, uh, we like to see try. We like to try to see every um, stance, every every side of an issue, and so that that's probably. And since there uh, there's some group of the community who gets angry or there's backlash at every single thing Arena it does, like we said at the beginning of this uh, gem store debate. Uh, you get just a little bit angry about everything that comes out in the gem store yeah. because you like to see every point of the uh, of the issue. Um, yeah, so that's what happens. Pretty much, I think that yeah. that, that kind of sums it up. Yeah, I, I think I I don't understand why people get angry about gem store when you can convert the gold to gems. Yeah. Like because there's a not. because there's a large group of people who are not good at that. Right? They're not good at making gold, and also um, they don't they don't and... like the um they don't like the the uh, the whole concept of kind of they they like having the rewards in the game, right? They don't want yeah. it to turn. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, don't want it to yeah, become gem wars. Yeah, sure. too. They they want you to have to go instead of just they 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 kind of like they kind of like a saltier version of me. Like so they don't like the fact that the way you get rewards in Guild Wars Two, the way you get rewarded, the way you get skins in Guild Wars 2 is by grinding the best farm, converting the gems and buying. That's that cuz that I kind of said that feels kind of shitty, right? That doesn't feel good. You're not accomplishing anything yeah. doing that. People want uh, those those kind of people are upset because they want to do something in the game that isn't just totally brain dead farming and get their rewards. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> <laughs> And I think a lot of people, too, and I definitely fall into this category, you know, you can only be outraged at something for so long where you're just like, I give up. I just don't even care anymore. Yeah. I, I've lost hope that anything good is ever going to come from this. So I just don't care. And the the other factor with um, the other problem with the gold to gems conversion and buying all the rewards on the gem store is that it devalues everything. Um and what I mean by that is, is that there's no way to tell the difference between someone who's gone out and earned something and someone who just whipped out their credit card and bought it, right? That That's a huge deal. That's why legendaries worthless now. Uh, well, pretty much, because everyone, everyone's got a fucking legendary, right? Um, it, 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 and, and stuff like uh, all the skins, all the outfits in the gem store are worthless because there's no prestige attached to them, really. They, they, the only value in them is that they look kind of cool, right? Uh, and that's... It doesn't feel good. You don't feel special. You don't feel like a unique player, do you? If if everyone can just get whatever you want, like everyone can get everything, and it's very easy to get everything, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was just thinking about the. I think most of the backlash with the mount skins was the RNG factor. 
that. Yeah. 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 Oh, a lot of it, but the, you know, that's especially on my part. Thing. It was, be, you know, it was because of the uh, on my part, it was a couple of things. Number one, it was RNG instead of letting you just people just want uh, for a lot of people. If they're going to buy something, they just want to buy that specific something. They don't want to gamble for sparkle mount. They don't want to gamble for whatever. Even though you always get a mount, they just want a specific one. They don't want to have to gamble five, ten times in order to get the one that they actually want to buy. If uh, you and that buy, continues to be a topic. Yeah. But if you, you know. if you buy a single mount skin, does it reduce the price of if you want to buy all the rest mount skins? Does that the big bundle if you later decide to buy the bigger bundle? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. So it That's doesn't reduce that price. So if you no. once buy a single mount skin, you might just want to gamble the rest too. Yeah, yeah you have to. Well, because <clears throat> otherwise you're wasting money, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, just, what, just about what I said about legendaries and prestige. Like, uh, what, what I mean by that is that you can definitely enjoy the skin. I mean, I do enjoy leg. I really like the look of legendaries. My character looks fucking great, dude. But um, I'd much prefer... I don't know. That there's there's more of a story to like some of the generation two ones that have the stories to them, right? Like they're doing Chuka and Chumpa. That was actually kind of fun, and, and you've gone out and done this adventure, right? Uh, so there is there is a little bit of little bit of extra to that. Whereas the new ones, you can craft them in like thirty minutes just by by buying gold and having gold just to instantly get them. And yeah, it's a cool skin, right? But there's no um, there's no effort. Uh, isn't everyone was bitching about how the collection sucked? No, well some of them are aids, but you know at least it's at least there's a bit of prestige to it, right? Uh, they, Ooh, it, very exclusive though. Very exclusive is the tiger backpack skin. Is it that you can't well, get unless you do a, halfway through Chupa, Chupa and Chupa? Really it's not really a backpack skin, but yeah. Ah, uh, whatever. It's a backpack skin. <laughs> and, and there's nothing. By the way, there's no, uh, about the farming thing. There's nothing wrong with brain dead farming. If people enjoy that, they absolutely should do that. I would encourage anyone to enjoy enjoy the game. You want to, uh, but we're talking about prestige here, and and the fact that. You can't have prestige if there's if it's like very easy and trivial to get pretty much everything. That's the issue here, right? You don't have to do anything in the game. There's there's no specific task. No item has any kind of specific meaning to it. Like you could you can't look at someone and say, "Aha, this person has done this because of what they have." And again, the game is designed that way. In a certain way, this is just me kind of not exactly disliking, but kind of. Not feeling the whole the way the game is designed, right? It's. Uh... I have an important question. I mean, yeah, yeah, Ziggy, uh, Ziggy, it's not hard, but it, you know, at least it's something, right? But yeah. Go, go I ahead, have Travis. I have an important question. The guaranteed uh, wardrobe unlock mm. that you get in the Black Lion chest. Yeah. Does that encompass every single wardrobe unlock in the game? No. Okay. Good. Just make it sure. <laughs> can't Just, unlock, it, you can't it, unlock it, the legendary now. It hasn't okay. been updated right. since. <laughs> Not it hasn't legendary been updated sure, since but. September twenty second. So anything that was released after September twenty second isn't in there. There's a number of other skins. For example, like the molten jetpack isn't in that unlock, and okay. legendaries aren't in there, obviously. And there, there's some other items that aren't a part of that wardrobe. Yeah. Most yeah, skins are, smart. but not every skin. Yeah, but not like yeah. So. That that will never negate exclusivity of some items, at least. That's nice. Good, good. Yeah. Woo! Would you? Would you? Can I please not be awkward? That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Would you pay a monthly subscription uh, if that meant that there was no gem store related like those well, skins? Like, um, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's. It, it would it would never happen because even World of Warcraft, who has a monthly yeah. sub, has a gem store. I, 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 no, I, I think that, that that's kind of I know I have no problem with the gem store whatsoever. Would I pay a monthly fee for Guild Wars? Honestly, yeah, sure, I, I probably would actually because I I do really like the game. Like, I'm, if it was, if monthly fee would not stop me from playing this, a hundred percent, no way. But actually, I the thing is I have I, the thing is um, this maybe maybe not coming across, but I have zero problem with uh, Guild Wars 2's mark um business model. Honestly, I have zero issue with it. Sure. The mount skin was a bit greedy, but hey, like it doesn't affect the gameplay, right? So it's 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 right. it's whatever. Uh, at the yeah. end of the day, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the fact that we get content in the game that I can enjoy uh, and um, updates to stuff like uh, you know the gamers I like, which is World vs One PVE. As long as I have up updates to that, con you know, keeping the content fresh, good quality content, I'm down, right? I, I yeah, I, I, sure, I've got no problem with the um, 
I got no problem with their business model, even if it was a monthly fee, I would still pay it. Would I like to? No, I prefer this model. <laughs> I would not. I would definitely not like a monthly fee. That's fucking bullshit, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I would still play. Like it, it wouldn't. It yeah. it depends what the monthly fee got you, right? Like China had a VIP system, which was basically a monthly fee that was pretty generous for what they were paying for, really. Um, so it depends. I mean, obviously they couldn't convert now. It's far too late for something like that. And it's not even. It's not exactly the gem store arena that's a model I have a problem with. It's things they do in the gem store. It's how they price particular things. It's how they money grab for particular things. And honestly, gold to gems, I think, as much as I know many of you out there take advantage of that, I think that was a mistake from the from the start and has caused a lot of problems over the years. But um, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, the gem store had to be done in order to keep this game running. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I got, I have really have no issue with it whatsoever. I think that kind of yeah, uh, yeah, but the, yeah, no, but I'll the problem ahead. was the unique rewards outside of the gem store. If everything can be traded with gold or gems, yeah. there's. No oh, so you're saying if you items. needed, if you traded, if, if they needed a monthly fee to make that happen? Yeah, oh. but uh, if you had monthly subscription, but then all those I, items would be obtainable uh, in like rates. And I feel like that. it should be more like it's packaged into the price of the uh, expansions. Like exclusive rewards from expansions are packaged into the price of the expansions. Yeah. And what if what if all the gem store um, skins also had a quest line? That you need to complete like content. Well, I, I that's <laughs> the reward. Well, if, the quest, so if, 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 if you buy a, deal, a small DLC that contains <laughs> that reward, uh, mm. I, you know, you know that that will be kind of interesting. Actually, that will, that would actually be kind of an interesting way to do it. Like you would unlock a quest to go into. That would actually be really interesting. Um, I don't think I don't think it would work out well though. Um, I, I would just yeah, but I wouldn't. I mean, expect you technically it. do have that though. If well, you things, miss. Yeah. If you miss the uh, the Living World episodes, yeah, you, you can buy those in the gem yeah, store, yeah. and there are little quests there's that you have to do, quests, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you get th- access to trinkets and stuff. I, th- like I have to say, I think doing that for a specific outfit or a skin might be a bit of a, ooh, okay, maybe, maybe that's a little bit too far. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of like what they did with the garden system. Yeah, so you yeah. are going on a small quest, and yeah. then you can actually use They've done it before with minis as well. Mm. Do you think the garden would ever include an exclusive skin with it a little garden hat oh, Gar- yeah gardening hat off. yeah something like that, that. Took people off uh, i don't know maybe are there any items that like would be in the future added to the home instance that are like not gathering related but they have some sort of interaction so not just decorations but some sort of interaction like maybe like a pvp arena or something that you could add in your home instance or PV, a like, PVP jewel arena in the home instance. That will be kind of funny, actually. That will be kind of cool. I have to or say. like I target dummies or something like that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see it. I definitely see it. I, I think it actually right. a, a long while ago, <clears throat> a number of us were calling for that a DPS yeah. dummy in the home Inside instance. Yeah. Thing. yeah, in the home instance. Oh. In the guild or in the home instance. Yeah, yeah something like yeah. that. Yeah. That was before they added the actual DPS golden we have now. But yeah. Which is free and not in the gem store and inside the uh, PVE. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What an addition. One addition, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. I think, yeah, there is a potential for stuff like that that could make um, the gem store a little bit more fun. But uh, the key is having that in the game, though. That's what people want. And that's that's sense of what I want. I mean, it's it's fine. You can have this stuff in the gem store. You buy the skins. But I'd like to, I'd like to see things you can't buy, you know, as well. But... I think that's actually kind of unlikely, but hey. Tied to specific... Yeah, it'd be interesting if they could do it... Tie... Like Sample was saying, for World vs. World, that would be the way you have to do it, possibly. Tied to specific achievements that are like, I don't know, time-based or something. Or you could do something like tie it to the adventures in PvE, if you get below a certain time and certain things. Rather than just getting a gold chest, you get some sort of specific skin. If you get really, really fast. Hopefully people don't exploit it, but maybe it'd be something good like that. You know, my, my thing is, I would just like a... And th- I know this is asking for a lot. I know this probably hurts ArenaNet's bottom line. But I feel like 
once in a blue moon, once in a while, rather than put it in the gem store, just put it in the game. Give us something to do. Tease mm. us with the garden plot instead of just selling 2,000 outright with a collection. Mm. Or, or two plots for 1,000 yeah. each outright. And, you know, mm. just, just tease us a little bit. Give us a little bit of taste instead of making another Black Lion set. I mean, to be fair, they added two weapon sets, uh, the one that evolves into another with with uh, episode one. So in that regard, they could have made that a Black Lion set, and they didn't, right? So I guess... I guess in some regards, in some ways, it does work out sometimes. But if you're making 40 mount skins, throw one into the game. Throw one of each. Yeah. Just you know? take it. Well, yeah, yeah. S- s- sell us 35 instead of 40. Like, yeah. you know. Number five in the game. Yeah. Just put yeah. five in the still game. still make money. Yeah, yeah you still make money. Just put some of those in the game. <laughs> and that, that is the core issue. Like, two hours and 26 minutes, we arrive at the core issue. That is what people want. <laughs> and what Aurora underscore W says, I want to put effort into the game. Not the gem store. And that is kind of the thing, right? People buying stuff from the gem store is nice. People like it. You can get the cute little mount skins. You can get the cool outfit. You can get the dank hat or something, or like a peg leg. But people want to be able to actually play the game and feel directly rewarded for specific actions within the game. And that's kind of my... That's it. That's the mic drop, boys. Okay, that's great. Want. Okay, I think that is that kind of rounds it off. I think, boys. Wow, I think so. That was quite the intense tea time, guys. I have to say, what the hell? Yeah, it got heated, yeah. boys. It got very heated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the time has come for us to depart. But first, we will uh, educate you guys about one more thing, and that is about uh, where you guys can find the best content for Guild Wars Two uh, anywhere. And that's going to start off with our boy Sampo. He's joined tea time. First time here. He's got his little. Uh, he's got a little sunglass man. He's he's rotating back and forth there. That's his real face, guys. That's not. This is not an image. That's actually webcam. I bet you guys didn't expect that. It's webcam the entire time, boys. He's a ventriloquist, boys. He doesn't even need to use his uh, mouth. Okay. So let's go, Sampo. What 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 are you up to? I mean, come on. Everyone knows who you are anyway. But where can we find you? What's going on? Let us know. Yeah, I'm Sampo with two M's. <laughs> Sampo Studios or YouTube channel, and I don't make that much videos anymore but sometimes i do so i recommend you to subscribe and maybe i make some kind of meme there and you enjoy it <laughs> memes yeah. there you go that's what i like to hear memes big boy memes and let's see wait what's the order i have on the stream okay inks is next because that's what the order i have on the stream tile let's go mmo inks podcast <laughs> overlord he even tweeted about his return like that it, it, that, that's it. Seriously, like, the, it, the Inks is such a big event, he's such a big boy, that you have to tweet to, to actually accept the Preston for his arrival. Let's go, Inks. What's going on these days? Uh, so, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube at MMO Inks. Make sure you follow on Twitter. Teapot is, is winning. This is unacceptable, clearly. <laughs> um, actually, a lot of content has gone up on YouTube in the la- since I've been back. Like, almost, almost a video every single day, guys. Go watch Ooh. those videos. Uh, we got a new one on statuettes. We got a new black line chest video today. Probably nothing Monday, so I'm, I'm going to eat my own words there. But then Tuesday Plus is going to have more videos rolling out about jackal pups, garden plots, current events, and whatever the hell happens this week, because I'm sure something's going to happen. Uh, and we're getting ready for a new patch, which sounds like pretty darn soon. And then we've been going hard on Twitch. I've been I've been sick a little under the weather, so we've missed some Twitch days, sadly. You know, my voice can only hold up for so long right now. And uh, twitch.tv slash MMO Inks. We've been streaming a lot over there. Make sure you check it out. Been doing morning streams, late night streams. We're covering the time zones. We're covering the spread. So come check it out. We've been having a lot of fun. Boom. Get right on that, boys. And last but certainly not least, possibly the greatest (laughs) among us, it is World of Boot Spurs. Let's go. That's my name, World of Bootspurs. Uh, you can find me at worldofbootspurs.com uh, slash uh, info, info wars. It, wait, info wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, Infowars.com. No, no. Worldofbootspurs.com slash info question mark wars. Uh, you, yeah, I make, I make, uh, boost bed builds now is what I do. Um, and I'm having some trouble coming up with ones for, uh, Ellie, Necromancer, and Mesmer. 
They are uh, they're pretty solid for the, their lead specs right now. They're uh, they're all pretty good and it's hard to make hard them bad. To, hard to make them bad. Yeah, pretty much. All right, but I'm I'm working on it, so those will come out eventually. All right. Woo! All right, then and then finally, it is me. I am, you know, all I am is just a piece of crockery that you put tea in, you know, but that's okay. I also have great strength, 25 might boys. So let's go for the channel if you enjoyed this stream. <laughs> this is the only place. You won't find a podcast like this else in Guild Wars 2, boys. You won't get the fire. You won't get the spice. You won't get the zest. Okay, guys, you won't get that zest. You won't get that fire that you get on Tea Time, boys. There's no point in going to any other podcast at this point. It's redundant. It's a waste of your fucking time. Anyway, boys, follow the stream, guys. Follow me on Twitter. Inks is gonna win. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? We're all following me on Twitter right now, boys. Get over there. Go. Follow. Links below to everyone here, guys. Find those links. Go follow everyone. Sub to everyone. All that good stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Also, remember to subscribe as well, guys. You want those emotes, boys. I know you want those fucking emotes. I know you do. You want that cool picture. Look at Teapot Sad. Look at Teapot Flame. Teapot Flame. You know you want that, okay? But yeah, that is gonna be all for us, guys. And uh, it's time to... Say goodbye. Farewell, my friends. And there we, go. we will see you guys yeah. around on the internet. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.